Hey everyone, and welcome to CommanderCast episode 311, where your weekly source for community, strategy, and technology, hosted on our home site, CommanderCast.com. This week it is Adam and I, as usual. What is up? What is up, sir? All the things. Yeah. Adam, uh, we should probably introduce ourselves. Yes. I think, that, I think that's probably a good way to go. So That's a good start to the show. It is a good start to end, like almost any show, almost. Right, so. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so my name is Mark, I'm the Casual Scrub. I enjoy um, playing derpy games, and I don't really care if I win or if I know what the rules are, as long as, uh, <laughs> you know, everyone's having fun. It's fine. It's really loosey-goosey right. on this end. Um, but, yeah, I make the show, so Adam can't kick me off. So, um, That's so, true. Yeah. Yeah. So, Adam. Yeah, I'm Adam. Uh, I am a pretty big Johnny. I like to uh, play the combos, and uh, I am not as loose with the rules. <laughs> It's fine. Whatever. I'm, I'm more lawyery about it. You know, you just... Uh, and you, I am the co-host. You just gotta let it go, man. You know? Who says are you can't you, carry... Are you gonna, like, break into song now? Like, Frozen <laughs> Yeah, no. Thank God. No, we're not, we're really not gonna do that. Um, I did see, it as, a, as a great, horrible Frozen joke, I did see someone... I, I mean, this is, like, years ago. People have already seen this, but my favorite Frozen joke is, like, someone had, like, a Let It Go card, you know, and they just put it in the sympathy aisle of cards, and they just, like, took a picture of it, and I'm just like, oh, fuck. That was pretty good. Um, yeah. But anyway, aside from making fun of uh, people's horrible tragedies in life mm. uh, with with awful Disney cards, um, mm-hmm. keep up the conversation on Facebook and Twitter with us, folks, this week as we talk about... Um, some of the highlights of Magic's 25-year history. Ooh. Ooh. Adam, I feel old, man. Come here. I know. Like, it's, it's, <laughs> like Magic's too been old. around for 25 years, and I remember everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, and I was like 14 when that came out. Yeah. Oh, fuck me. <laughs> Adam, I don't like when things get old. So. Um, I mean, I'm fine with things getting old. I don't want to get old. Yeah, that's the problem. Like, I'm fine with just like, oh, look. Yeah, like, it's fun when my students come back to visit. Oh, wait, you're out of college already. Oh, shit. Yeah, no, if I could be in some kind of temporal bubble, that'd be fine. Yeah, I'm pretty good with that. Like, we just need, like, the hyperbolic time chamber to, like, be be true. And then we're fine. I I like that you made the most obscure Dragon Ball Z reference there. (laughs) Uh, yeah, I don't know. I keep thinking about picking up that new Dragon Ball Fighters. I know it looks good, but I don't know. I like, think I ob- is I, it worth like? Probably uh, not. I object to it just because it has the Z at the end and it turns into a plural like that. That's just too '90s for me. Like I know we're talking about the '90s today, but I just can't, I can't. Like if it was, just, yeah. uh, 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 I don't know. Um, but anyway, folks, so stay with us this week uh, in community. We're going to talk about um. A really interesting article that was up on um, Motherboard, uh, which is one of the Vice's proxy sites for tech uh, this week about um, how to spot a fake magic card and just the proxy debate in general. Strategy and technology this week, we're going to talk about some of our favorite strategy and technology from the early years of magic. So stick with us after the break and we will be right back. Yay, interstitial. Mm-mm. I'm also disappointed by the Dragon Ball Z game that you can actually win a match in the same week that you start it. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, like you like you can't just start a Kamehameha, come back three weeks later, and then it finishes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is disturbing. I want at least a season of content in between the start of a yeah, move and the absolutely. end of a move. Yeah. I do love that show, but it is a funny, <laughs> like, and true, you know... I, I remember I used to have like a, some of my best friends in the service used to be addicted to that show, and I remember I would like walk out, get food, come back, and then he was still charging up the same move. Yep, yep. And I'm like, this is this is the thing, and like this happened often. And I'm like, did you guys just pause it for a long? Is it on loop? Is that it, it? You know, because this is how fucking old it is. It was no, on he's tapes. He's on the third syllable. Calm down. I'm like, oh man, I don't understand. All of a sudden, now he's blonde. I'm like, oh, yeah. okay, that's a all right. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> Dragon Ball. In community this week, ladies and gentlemen, Adam, how do you feel about proxies? How do I feel about proxies? Uh, in general, we do not allow them in our play group. Uh, we make some exceptions for we have made exceptions for I own a card and 
uh, I want to buy like a, a fancy like proxy, like a, like the proxy guy does. Mm-hmm. Um, or we have also made exceptions for you know, oh, I have like this one card that didn't come in the mail, and it's part of the deck, and yeah, you know, like like we've made exceptions here and there, but generally speaking, you're not allowed to play a card in the play group unless. Unless you have the card. I am usually very forgiving. The only thing that kind of annoys me is when people just do Sharpie on the back of a magic card. Because that's just- that, that is our usual proxy, to be honest. Yeah. Like when somebody when somebody is like, I don't know, I just don't have, you know, a storm crow. Like and and I haven't bought it yet. Like just write storm crow on the back of a card. Uh, Not okay. that anybody needs a storm crow or in EDH, but yeah. You know, just- Think of a card for a second. No, that's fine. I mean, like I, I, it, whenever I need a, a card that I don't have or it's in the mail, it's usually like some derpy fucking piece of shit from Visions or right, whatever. Exactly. You know, I'm just like, oh, I don't know, I don't have it. But I will go to the to the trouble of like going to Magic Cards that info and printing off like a black printing and white it, picture, yeah. just so I'm like, look, this even this looks like a card. We can read the text on right, it, right? You know, <sighs> and then like it'll come in the mail next week and whatever. I don't know. My twenty five cent common from Versions will come in the mail. It'll be fine. Right. Um, however, there are some people who put an awful lot of money into it. Um, yeah. And I'm like, I'm really down with those three D proxies, like those three D art, those layered cards. Yeah, yeah. Some of those or those are or like some really cool mocked up. You know, I I think that our play group would still kind of come down on like, oh, okay, I bought this really fancy, you know, moat proxy and I'm going to run it. Well, do you even own a moat? And how much did you pay for the proxy? Oh, you paid $10 for the proxy and you don't own a moat? Uh, that $700 discount ain't flying. Yeah, that's... See, and this is the hard part, right? Like, I do feel like that's a thing. Like, I wouldn't personally... And I don't know why, because I don't give a shit about proxy. Like, if other people did it, I wouldn't really care. Um, right, but right. like I personally would not proxy up a moat or like a tabernacle because yeah. I'm like I feel like I'm I'm I don't know. I, well, it falsely it falsely pushes the arms race in your. That's groups. a good point. You know, like, like every group has a certain dynamic and usually similar-ish budgets. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're will, all willing to spend X number of dollars on the on the decks, uh, and we we have people with some more expensive decks and and things like that. Uh, like I, I only have like half of the duels. Yeah. But we have we have two or three players that have full sets of duels, and like you know players that have Gauntlet of Might and stuff like that. Um. So some people are willing to to pump it a little bit more money into it. But I think if everybody was just able to buy, you know, a moat or a bizarre Baghdad or something like that for ten dollars, then it, then it changes the dynamic and it, it changes the arms race, and then everybody else feels like they would need to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, I guess this was the genesis of this was I was reading an article by Matthew Gall over on Motherboard, uh, how to spot a fake thousand dollar magic car- magic the gathering card. Yep. And uh particularly the subtitle of this is my favorite. Inside the card game C D underbelly of counterfeits, repacks, and proxies. Yeah. So I mean two of those things are shady, right? I don't feel like yeah. proxies are, but then again, like it, it all depends on how upfront you're gonna be about it. Like I'm not gonna try and pass off a proxy. Right. to like a store and try and get them to buy it or whatnot. Um, but man, if you look at some of the, the counterfeits you have on here, I'm like, I can't tell the difference. You know, there's right. some, some pictures of like a library of Alexandria or, you know, a tundra or something yeah. in there. And like, I don't think I could tell the difference. And actually like, I'm, I mean, I'm never going to buy a tundra. Right. I think like I'm, I'm so, just not going to do it. I mean, somebody it. gave me a set of the like Chinese, very good quality, Alpha duels and power nine, mm-hmm. a playset. So I have, I have four of each. Um, and I mean, at some point, like, yeah, I mean, I could get away with selling them to somebody who's dumb. Yeah. Because they're not, uh, they're, they're good, very good proxies or very good counterfeits. Mm-hmm. They are not perfect. Like I, I can tell you the, the inconsistencies by looking at them. Yeah. Um, I, you know, there is, you can definitely like, if you've been around and especially like if you've played with these cards before, if you've had them in your hand, yeah. you know, um, yeah, you can, you can definitely tell the difference, but like just kind of casually looking at them or better yet, like just because you want to play with them. Like the part where I come down on this is, you know, the reserve list, if it's going to continue to be a thing, like, 
you're you're going to price people out of the game, and now you're even pricing them out of some of like the derpy shit from Legends that that I love yep, for yep. Commander. You know, like when Nebuchadnezzar is a twenty two dollar card. Like, what right. the fuck is going on with this world? Well, there's a white border one that's cheaper, but yeah, also true. Yeah, I suppose. Um, but I mean, for the ones that aren't, like, I don't know, we we'll, uh, Rasputin. So you know, right, right. yeah, absolutely. No, I mean your your point is definitely well taken, and yeah, I mean some some play groups might start to move more toward that. You know, if you can get a good looking proxy, then you know use it, kind of thing. Um, but I, I think you do have to, you know, I mean it's it's kind of up to each individual's moral compass. You know, uh, like I, I freely admit, and I, and I don't generally use those as proxies anyway. Because, like I said, I mean, they're Power 9 and Dual Lands. I have half the Dual Lands anyway. Yeah. Uh, and Power 9 is banned other than Time Twister. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not using them in EDH games. I just have them. Yeah. And, um, and if you... I don't care where you are, like, with your playgroup, without a playgroup, if you threw down a Time Twister, like, you're going to stop that fucking game and people are going to stare. So, people still do that yeah, whenever yeah, I yeah. see, like, a Mana Drain come out at a shop. And Mana Drain wasn't even all that, you know, all that uncommon seven or eight I mean, years ago. Yeah, it was 150 bucks, you know? Yeah, now it is, yeah. But, like, back, you know, yeah. when, when Commander first started out, like, it was still expensive. It was oh, probably yeah. a $30, $40 card. And you're like, oh, man, wow, that's pretty big. You know, I still remember playing when people would just throw out, um... Uh, Mishra's Workshops when Mishra's Workshops yeah, is like I mean, a $50 that, card. Well, see, that's another one. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, if everybody's just proxying those up, uh, that changes things a lot. In it does. Career, you know? yeah. I mean, those cards are um, worth that much for a reason. You know? Right. I would say that reading this article and watching some of uh, Rudy's videos on Alpha Investments, he goes through a lot of, uh, like, people actually ship him counterfeits all the time. And say like, hey, you know, take a look at this. Tell me if it's real. Tell me if it's counterfeit. You know, blah blah blah. Um, and he and he analyzes them on his videos and and takes a look. He mostly goes off a of feel because it, usually they have a, a a very different like feel to the finish of the card. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'll be honest. I mean, like some of this is really hard. I've taken a look at a lot of real ones uh, and some fake ones under eye loops, and they are not easy to discern. This is a good guide, but you basically just need to make sure that you're buying from somebody that you actually trust. Yeah. And use this stuff to your advantage. Because, I mean, I've I've looked at an underground sea before that is 100% real under an eye loop, and I still was like, that looks shady. Because the printing <laughs> of one of the border lines was slightly off. Yeah. And, and I think it was just part of the printing process. You mm-hmm. know, like, there were misprints back in the day. And it was like, you know, a millimeter to the left of where it should have been. And I'm like, I wouldn't buy it because the whole border is shifted a millimeter. So it looks like it's counterfeit. It's yeah. not, but it looks like it. Yeah. One of the parts in this article that, uh, that really was an eye opener for me is that sometimes guys who own stores or, you know, like large stores, not talking about the little mom and pop yeah. stuff. If they're buying a collection, uh, of some rare cards, what they'll do is they'll just take one and they'll rip one in half. Because apparently yeah. one of the ways to do it is a, there's like a blue there's a blue core to the original cards that is not there yeah. in reprints and I guess that's one of the things that's really really hard to um, to fake. So, so the blue line test doesn't work anymore. Really? No. Oh. the The ones that I have have the blue line in them, and you can actually see them under an eye loop from the side. It doesn't make it for a good picture in an article like this, but if you look with an eye loop at the side of a card. Yeah, you know, like you're you're holding it flat <laughs> to your eye. Yeah, uh, and you look at it under. You can see the blue line, but some uh, of the newer prog- some of the new counterfeits have it. Man, I just need to get my up my counterfeit game. You know, it was, it was it's funny. I think one of the times I think this would be really fun. Like, I mean, my daughter's only like five months old, but like if I was going to play with a kid, you know, like a little kid and get them into magic, like right. I think it'd be hilarious to just start off with like a, a, a an alpha proxy set like you have and just start yeah, throwing out yeah. black lotuses and moxes and just have fun. Right. Like as as you as we would have done in right, 1994 right. when these cards were worth nothing and we treated them just like every other, you know, baseball card back in the day. I mean, you did, but like it, it became a solved format very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But I mean, they don't know that. Come on. You're like playing yeah, with kids enough. anyway. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> So I think that would be hilarious and fun. And honestly, that's probably the only way I'm ever going to get to play like Commander 95 ever again. So I, yeah, 
That's. I mean, I, it's sad to say. Yeah, like, I mean, the, re- the reserved list is. I, I can't. I can't. I can't anymore because it's just. I can't. I mean, I haven't been able to defend it in years, so I don't. No, I'm not even talking about defending it. I. I, I just can't argue against it enough anymore. It's like. It's like <laughs> arguing against the ban list. Yeah, you're just like, eh. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Um, the lawyers. The lawyers would eat me alive, and that's about it. <sighs> I don't want to. I don't want to say that's a metaphor for like other things that are going on in our public life at the moment. But yeah, ugh. Anyway, so um, well, I guess that'll that'll wrap up the community and the proxy debate, folks. If you guys have um, I don't know, strong feelings one way or the other on proxies, we've talked about proxies before. Um, yeah. but again, like especially like maybe fakes or like things you know definitely. Like I'm not. I don't want. Not that any of our fans would do this, but I don't want to hear from anybody who's like, yeah, I totally scammed this you know, poor kid and got him to blah, blah, blah. Like, no, if you do that, you're a scumbag and you deserve to die. Yes, don't be a garbage human. Like, that is not okay. Yeah, don't be a garbage human. Um, that goes for a lot of things on the internet. So, it, you know, yeah, like... If, we, this if is you have an agreement with your playgroup where you're like, uh, I'm going to use these proxies and everybody's okay with it, then I don't care. You're yeah. Like, that, that's great. I mean, I'm sure there must be kitchen table groups out there that do this. You know? Absolutely. I but mean, then, like, and and in a kitchen table, I don't. Th- I mean, yeah, okay. There, there's this slight, you know, moral compass of like technically you are taking money away from you know LGSs and things like that because anytime you counterfeit anything, you're you know creating market influx where there is none, and you know, like, so yes, it's not good. But I'm I am not personally going to get butthurt about some people playing proxies in their own group. I mean, I if this was your counterfeiting stuff that's in standard right now, I think that might be the like like that, and that's how stores make their money, right? They make their money right. off F and M, you know. So like that's really where it happens. This is oddly enough, like this this conversation always veers really close to you know like um like the ROM debate in old video games. Like, do you buy the actual oh, old video yeah. game or do you actually do that? And like, no, it's not legal. It's never going to be legal. Like counterfeiting cards is never going to be legal either. But it's, it's almost the same debate because they're never going to like for for the games that they re release then you you have more of an argument on your hands. You know, like, well, why are you downloading the ROM for, you know, Mega Man if you, you never purchased it, but they just re-released Mega Man? Right, yeah, like those, like the big ticket things, and that, that's right. it's an odd inverse, right? Like the big ticket things in Magic, they're never going to re-release, or they say they are never going to re-release. Um, whereas like the big ticket things in video games, you can almost guarantee, like how many different ways can you play Mega right. Man now? You know, like you have your, you can yeah. play it on literally any system ever, including modern PCs. So. Yeah, that's why I start to lighten up, up on it a little bit in, in Magic is because... Like they're like, oh, we're never gonna reprint these. Well, you know what? Screw you. Like you, you have two <laughs> options. I'll buy, I'll buy stuff from you in a legitimate manner, or I'm gonna proxy stuff up. Yeah, I mean, and that's... I'm not even talking about like supporting counterfeiters. I mean, like I might just proxy it. Yeah. You know, I again, my play group doesn't really allow that. But if I'm just some, you know, guy, there's nothing that would keep me from thinking that. Mm-hmm. Like you can either take my money. Yeah, you're going to have to pay out $2 million in a class action lawsuit. So ho- I hope that you print, reprint all of it and take all the money that you make because you'll make more than you pay out, but whatever. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, you can either take my money or you cannot. Yeah. And I still want to play with those cards yeah. in a casual format. Yeah. All these things are absolutely true. So. Now, enter, entering any kind of tournament with y- using any kind of, you know, Proxies is not allowed. Entering any kind of tournament with any kind of counterfeits is not allowed. Well, what's the one caveat to that? Do they do that for vintage? I mean, now I can't even place paper vintage anymore. But like, I have seen. Um, so LGSs can make slight adjustments to that, and I like I, I've heard like legacy ones where they'll allow you know five um, proxied cards. Huh. I did in, not in know they the did that for legacy. Day. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but but generally speaking, I, I mean, also, I don't think those are sanctioned events because I don't think they're allowed to say that for sanctioned events. Mm, truth. Yeah. Um, so I, when I, when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about like the bigger tournaments. Uh, I, I could be wrong on that. It's possible the sanctioned events are allowed to say that, but I don't think so. Okay. Interesting. Well, like I said, folks, if you guys have um, some thoughts about proxies in general, let us know. 
I'm sure this is always going to come up again too, but especially because we were talking about the the past 25 years of Magic history, it's almost impossible to get away from the should you proxy, should you not proxy at that point, unless you want to mortgage right. a house, so, <clears throat> sell a that kidney. Means, could you reserve lists? No wizards. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway. So uh, stick with us, folks. Uh, after the break, we're going to come back and talk strategy um, with one of the older strategies in Magic. Um, the strategy of no strategy. Battle cruiser magic. That seemed appropriate to say it's the, the strategy of no strategy. Yeah, Turning interesting. I don't know. I, I didn't think of it that way, but to a certain extent, I agree. Yeah. In strategy this week, ladies and gentlemen, for the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk uh, of the 25 years of Magic's history, uh, which is culminating this year in our, our cool look back set that uh, Magic is putting together. Uh, we want to talk about some of the, the strategies and the technology that has come to inform the way we play the game over the years. So, because yeah. this is Commander Cast, and because it's Commander, I thought we would it would be inappropriate to start anywhere else except with Battlecruiser Magic. So, mm-hmm. uh, Adam, can we, can you give us a quick little rundown if people haven't heard what Battle Cruiser Magic is? Yeah, so I mean, my understanding of Battle Cruiser Magic, which was best exemplified in the standard of original Zendikar, is basically you're kind of just waiting to put giant things out. You're like kind of spending your time building up towards something giant or multiple giant things, and then just bashing those together. Yeah. Um, now you have to we have to put some serious caveats on this because old people like us know that actual creatures back in the day were kind of <laughs> shit. So yeah. like Battle Cruiser I Magic, when I was looking through all these. Sets. <laughs> yeah, Battle Cruiser Magic is not really the thing. Um, I mean, I used to play Battle Cruiser Magic only in the sense that like. You know, I love big, giant, derpy creatures, but even, like, big, giant is, like, a 5-5 five, five back in the day, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think, like, the the first deck that I played with, saw, etc., that was kind of battle cruisery was basically, I, I might be able to name all the cards, and I'm not sure, but uh, it was basically, like, Land of War Elves, Finn Horn Elves, uh, Gaia's Touch, Rampant Growth, and then Crawl Worm, Scaled Worm, Force of Nature. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, right. that's, I mean, like that's it. <laughs> yep. I think. Oh god, I had the derpiest green white deck back in the day, and my entire goal was to just fart out lands and and derpy little creatures until I could get either force of nature or personal incarnation. Which yeah, oh. yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Just um, as good slash bad. Yeah. So I mean, because. Yeah, who doesn't want to lose half their life along with their biggest creature when it dies right. to a one mana removal spell like Swords to Plow? Um, yeah, whatever. So yeah, that was uh, that was it. Or like if I was going crazy and I was doing like a green black thing, you know, Lord of the Pit. So right, yeah, right. buddy. Yeah, I mean that, that's basically it. you know you you get your one or two you know giant creatures out, and for the rest of the game. You either hold back, hold back on the rest of them, or you just keep playing them out and just smacking, smacking people in the face. Uh, obviously, you know, Rise of Eldrazi was it Rise of Eldrazi? Second set, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because World Wake was the third. So. Yeah, um, you know, obviously Rise and and all that kind of stuff definitely um, pushed Battle Cruiser Magic to a, a new level uh, <clears throat> in different ways where it. Spent time doing battle cruiser in two different main methods, which was one play giant Eldrazi after you ramp there, and the other one kind of invest time in the creatures that you already have, so the level up mechanic mm-hmm. um, to make them giant, and you know, and then smack people in the face. But uh, 
Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, we play EDH, you see some battle cruiser, and you just turn big things sideways. Yeah. Oh, and I do have to throw out a quick little correction just so we don't get comments about this. Sorry, World Wake was the second set and Rise of the Eldrazi was actually the third set. Which I should have known because oh, yeah, yeah. Rise of the Eldrazi was the set I actually got back into Magic with. So, oh, okay. Um, yeah, like I, I picked up a box of Rise of the Eldrazi. I think I ended up trading that, that box for something, whatever it was in standard at the time, which is a dumb fucking move. But I mean, in retrospect, you know, but that, there's there's a lot to be said about retrospect. Yes, <laughs> believe me, the the things, the amazing moves I've pulled and the deals I've done in hindsight are just yeah. they're, they're legendary only to me. But that's all right. Um, so yeah, I mean, Battle Cruiser Magic is definitely one of my favorite methods of magic. Um, right. It, it's funny because like whenever I envision Battle Cruiser Magic, I just think of like Battlestar Galactica for good reasons, right? Like you know, you have. You have the Galactica. It, it's the thing that you're protecting with all your little small stuff and you're trying to get it out there. But if that gets hosed, like, there's your strategy. You know? <laughs> if your fucking battle cruiser sinks, what else do you have? Uh, nothing. Okay, shuffle up and, you know, go again. Right, right. So that's the, that's the downside. So the serious Achilles heel to that strategy. And it really yeah. is, just like I said in the notes, like, it is the, I like it, I like it as the Zen strategy of no strategy because it's just, right. you don't, <sighs> Forgive me for saying so, fans of Battle Cruiser Magic, but I lump myself in this category too. Like you don't really have to think about it that much. You're not doing mental math, except for like, is your power and toughness bigger than their power and toughness? You know? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Do, and- I, do I have trample? Do they not? <laughs> yeah. Can I somehow like I don't know? Can I be like the the biggest slickest thing is like I don't know? Can you give your Battle Cruiser shadow? Ooh, right. You know, um, big deal. So that's. Uh, it's a fun derpy set for me like one of my favorite decks i've mentioned this a bunch of times is my lorthos deck where like it it's lorthos giant dumb sea creatures dot deck I right i love that deck it's so stupid it's just like there's <laughs> there's so many better things i could be doing in mono blue like literally so many different most powerful color in magic has been for decades and i just want to put big sea creatures out like yeah you know even in that de- even in that deck if I just swapped out Lorthos for, um, as my general with literally probably any other accelerating creature or any other just like, I don't know, like like a zombie just so I could draw an extra card, you right. know, like it probably would be objectively better. But I'm not going to do that, goddammit, it, because it's Lorthos and he's a giant idiot octopus. So, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's all I really got. So... Uh, this is going to be a rather short segment today, I think, because that's kind of all you have to say about Battle Cruiser Magic. Yeah, I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's big stuff. Swing. Uh, this is ninety percent of what you're going to see in EDH. Yeah, it's pretty good. I don't know. How about this? How would you fight against uh this Battle Cruiser Magic? Um, just removal and watch and drink their tears. That's pretty yeah. Much it. I mean. Right? Like, spot removal is a thing. And having good spot removal is a thing. Make sure that their exile effects so that, you know, their avicens and things don't just roll over the game. Uh, but, yeah. Run, run good removal. That's the, <laughs> that's the strategy there. Yeah. And I mean, I guess, I don't know if this is such a, an issue anymore. I think people know to run spot removal. But, especially when EDH was first starting out, like, spot removal is actually rather controversial. Like, I do remember old episodes of Commander Cast covering this. Like, why would you ever bother? Occasionally, I will run into someone who maybe hasn't played EDH in a little in a little while coming back and be like, why are you running so much spot removal? Like, why don't you just run more sweepers? Yeah, running too much of it is a horrible idea. Yes. I don't think you do, like, but I don't know. What do you think? What do you think a fair group is? If you know, um, if you know that this is like a, a majority of the strategy other EDH players are going to play, like, what do you think is a fair amount of spot removal you would run your deck, Adam? I usually put like five pieces. Oh, wow. That's actually more than I do. I usually put three or four. But then again, I habitually run too little, too little removal in general. Well, I mean, so. when I say spot removal, I mean, like, let's say you have like a green white deck. All right. So you've got, you're, you're probably going to run Swords Path. Yeah. You're gonna run um Croson Grip. Croson right? Yeah. Um like a disenchant slash naturalize is not a horrible thing to have in there. Mm-hmm. Uh you know, and then you're already up to four, so like one more piece, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's funny because I was thinking when I think removal, I usually put it 
in a different category, or maybe I split it down the middle because I think about artifacts and enchantments, and then I think about creatures, and I usually run, I mean, depending on my meta, but I usually run way more creature removal because of thing because I know that I'm likely to see way more annoying creatures than I am annoying, or I can I can maybe deal with artifacts and enchantments. Like mostly artifacts and enchantments, I see are like mana rocks. So sure, like, yeah, yeah. Occasionally you'll get some really annoying shit, but I'm you I'm usually the one playing the annoying artifacts. Like, I'm right. the, the guy who runs Mesmeric Orb in, like, five decks, so, you know. Uh, I mean, I try to add more of that stuff in these days, because I just... <clears throat> more more games are getting decided by artifacts and enchantments in, in our meta, because just people aren't running answers for it, so I have to put it in there. Hmm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, folks, uh, that kind of wraps it, wraps it up for Battlecruiser Magic. Uh, I'm sure you guys have thoughts, because you have... You're, a, you're listening to Commander Cast, so you have or have played against a Battlecruiser deck in the past, per, likely multiple times. So if you have thoughts about it, uh, hit us up in the comment section. So, Without further ado, we're going to move on to easily the longest section this week, which is why we kind of sped through the other two. Um, in technology, we are going to talk about some of our favorite cards from Magic Past. So stick oh, with us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, technology. You know, my wife was asking me the other day, like, what what I'm doing on my phone for, like, I don't know, half I know, hour I know. And, she, and I'm like, yeah, I'm just looking at old cards. And she's like, is that fun for you? Is this a thing? And I had to think about it, and I'm like, yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it and, is. And I like the fact now that I'm old enough where I'm like, and I don't give a shit. Like, right. if you can't understand why this is fun, because this is the thing. Like, it's you never had that thing where you're like, man, I should probably be doing something else with my time for yeah. whatever reason, you know? Like, and I think that often when I'm on my phone and I'm just like, I should not be. I should, social media is a plague against humanity, which I've increasingly thought. So I'm just like, yeah. I should probably be doing something else. But man, like, if I'm just looking through cards and I'm having a good time looking through some old cards, like, I'm actually kind of cool with that. I'm like, I'm all right. Right. Yeah. It's all right. Plus now I have an excuse. I'm like, I'm just doing it for the show. So I'm like, sweetheart, I'm internet famous. Like fucking back the fuck off. So, um, anyway, (laughs) yay technology. In technology this week, ladies and gents, we're actually going to do um, a kind of a multi-show format for this, and each of the, the preceding segments are probably going to be kind of short in these shows, because we really want to get into the meat and potatoes of uh, Magic's 25-year history, and so we want to kind of spotlight two of our favorite cards each from each of the sets of Magic's history. And we're going to start at the beginning, we're going to work our way through apologies if you had to sit through and you were just like shaking your fist in the air when I screwed up the order of World Wake and Rise in the Eldrazi like to the best of our ability we are going to put these in chronological order yeah we're probably gonna really screw something up along the way yeah because yo it's kind of confusing so I don't know um like where for instance I'll just throw out here you go here's something to talk about like where do you throw cold snap in do you do it chronologically, or do you, well, do, you talk so about that, Ice Age? Like, I, when I was originally doing it, I was just I was on MagicCards.info, and I was just doing it in the order that they had them listed. Yeah, and they list it with Ice Age, right? They do, which they list Ice Age up by where Cold Snap is. Yeah. So, like, way out of order for Ice Age, but in order for Cold Snap. Right. Because they keep the block together, yeah. Yeah, and so we're going to try and do it chronologically, yeah. Which is also going to be weird. Because, again, like, anytime you get 25 years of continuity, like, I don't know, just go try to, like, randomly tune into an episode of The Simpsons and see if you don't get all the in-jokes. You know what I mean? Like, there are... That twi- not funny. <laughs> not, yeah, not anymore. I know. Sad. No, um, it was never funny. Oh, what? Oh, no. Oh, I, I would take you to the woodshed over that one, sir. Come on. <laughs> there are some... There are, like... The Simpsons were definitely had its moment. I will not stand up for every episode of The Simpsons, but come on, man. 
Yeah. Adam, for good good lord, sir. So. Meh. <laughs> oh I I don't I don't I just I don't know what to do anymore. So. Meh. I was I I'm actually a little speechless at that. <laughs> just not, I just I don't know what to do. I don't know. All right, we're just going to talk about cards now because I don't know right, anything cards. else. Yeah, cards. Oh my cards. goodness. Cards. Um, <laughs> talk about some cards. Okay. All right. So moving on. Uh, yeah, we're going to start at Alpha Beta Unlimited Revised, and we kind of lump them all together for kind of obvious reasons. Yes, we know some things are unlimited. We're not in beta, and and vice versa. And I'm sure there are some differences here that mean something to someone. Yes, there are, but they're they're fairly small differences, and I think we 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 can move on. You know, knowing that. Yeah. <laughs> It's, I don't know, it's commander cast. Like we already screw up enough rules things, or I do anyway. Like I already give. I mean, alpha. Look, alpha, beta, and unlimited are almost exactly the same. Revised definitely had some major changes to it, but I think you can you can easily go off of you know just talking about all four of them at the same time. Yes. So we are going to lump them together, and then also I suppose it's also a good thing to talk about at the top here um what we were talking about before the show is because i don't know if there are any cards actually worth talking about from fourth edition through 10th edition like the core sets until m10 because m10 is where you get the titans and you get some some neat stuff thrown into core sets we're just not going to talk about the core sets so yeah unless someone has a compelling reason why we should because i couldn't find them people so that's yeah. not to say that i am the the foremost expert on this it's just that when we were looking through it we're like oh wait no all the all the cards we were going to talk about from these sets are all somewhere else so let's just talk about them where they originally came in yeah so i also wanted to give a little bit of context at least to mine uh i tried to stay away from cards that are banned in commander oh good one yeah, and that I also nice. tried to stay away from reserve list cards. Oh, uh, I didn't do that. I know, but that's okay. Yeah, that's that's why I wanted to give that caveat. And like, I, I was thinking cards that might actually be able to get reprinted in Magic Twenty Five. Yeah, I suppose, or Masters Twenty Five, or whatever it's called. Yeah, mm. but well, we've got we've got some spicy ones, regardless of that. That is true. So, uh, Adam, why don't we start off? Um, clearly, you did not adhere to the rules of us picking two each for Alpha, Beta, Unlimited, Revised. For I your mean, first I did section. if you think about it, right? Like, because I lumped fourth edition in that too, so I had five sets. So uh, I did two cards from each set, technically. I, did, mm, uh, I think you're playing fast and loose with the rules here, sir. But I, I'll, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'll not saying it. I'm not. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, but these, these are ones that I think that we can go through fairly quickly. Yeah. So, um, so I, I think that it is likely and right for us to have a reprint since Iconic Masters couldn't even. Um <laughs> I, I think that it's likely that we have a reprint of two cycles from the original sets, or, or things that I view as cycles. I don't even know that I that they are, um, but I think we're going to see a Sarah Angel, Air Elemental, Sanger Vampire, Shivan Dragon, and Crawl Worm cycle. Those are kind of like the prime big beaters of those. Some would argue that one of Mark's picks is actually the green beater from those sets. Um, but I, I think you're going to see all those, and I think that they're all going to be shifted to uncommon. Yeah. You know, I actually, I can't remember, I mean, I should, because I can have access to the internet, obviously, right in front of me. If Internet's hard. Internet is hard sometimes. Um, Force of Nature was my pick, and I can't remember if Force of Nature got moved down. No, actually, it's always been a rare. It has so, always been a rare. It has always it been a rare. it should be at this point, because that upkeep... <laughs> yeah oh man that upkeep i mean i've paid it hundreds of times but. yep i i totally have too and you know at some point it, it in green especially in mono green well you have so much extra mana anyway it doesn't really matter because right. if you're doing it right you know you're smashing them in the face with this so long that it's fine it's just gonna it, it's gonna even out i've taken the eight plenty of times too and i've i've let myself die plenty oh of times. wow yeah I, so, I usually did not do that but i i have yeah i mean that's not a that's not a winning strategy you don't do that if you want to win um, right but hey whatever so um yeah the only other times it was released other than rare was in the special like in the beatdown box set so 
Or like, oh yeah, okay. Or or like summer magic. Actually, no, summer magic actually was rare too. So never mind. I'm fucking. Yeah, lying. summer magic would have been rare. Yeah. All right. Um. So yeah, we went through you know the the big ones, but then I mean, you have everybody's favorite removal. So I do. Well, okay. So I figured we're gonna get those, mm-hmm. and then we're also going to get the kind of modified one spell or one mana three something spells from Mm. alpha so the original set was ancestral or actually in in wooberg order it was healing salve ancestral recall dark ritual lightning bolt giant growth they all give you three of some resource right Mm -hmm. um there are some so i took out two healing salve is just bad (laughs) yes it's, yes, and, it is. And, and they might still put it in there, but it is just bad. So I, I don't think that they will. I think it'll get replaced by Swords to Plow shares, which I think is more needed for reprints anyway. I, like, you know, there's still probably a few dollars each. Uh, so more swords in the world is fine. Ancestral Recall will not be reprinted. Thankfully. <laughs> uh, so they're going to put Counterspell in there, let's be honest. You think? Huh. I mean, if they don't put Counterspell in this set, then they have failed Iconic twice. <laughs> Um, it's interesting. I don't know if I think they're going to go this route. I think it would be kind of neat if they did, but I, I mean, what do I know about wizards and their reprinting habits? I'm surprised that this stuff, just like you, did not come out in Iconic Masters because it is the literal definition of Iconic. Like, these are icons of right. the past. Um, so they failed on, like, a literal level there, but yes, you know, it's not the first time I would be disappointed or even mystified, shall we say. About. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm ready for it, but uh, I think they will see all of those. I think a lot of those are really good reprints. Um, you know, Shiv and Dragon is probably the only Shiv and Dragon, and maybe Sarah Angel are the only ones that might see play in EDH of the creatures that I mentioned. Mm-hmm. Source to Plowshares, Counterspell, Dark Ritual, and Lightning Bolt all see play in EDH, so I would like to see them. Giant Growth does not all that much unless you're playing Infect, and then I still think there's better ways of doing it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. You know, look, I need a good watercolor mouse in my life. <laughs> sure. Okay. Yeah. I can't hate on you for that. You know. So that's that's where I stand. Mark, what are your picks for so, the early ones? I already talked about Force of Nature, and one of the reasons I've loved Force of Nature forever uh, is because it's the biggest derpiest creature. Like an eight eight creature was so unheard of back so in the day. So big back then. An eight eight trampler, right? Yes, eight eight trampler. Yep, hundred percent. Yeah, just that stomped over everything. Yes, I mean even even Lord of the Pit, which I think was the second biggest one. Yeah, it was a seven seven, and it was the second biggest one. They yeah. both had giant drawbacks, but. <laughs> Yes. They it, were strong. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there were other ones for, for other, um, for other colors that were just not as good. But man, Force of Nature, 8 8 Trampler, its upkeep is pay 4 green or take 8 damage during your upkeep. Look, either of those is fine. Yeah. You know, it's fine. Like, how much, how, how many life points do we have in EDH? We use so many. You just give yeah, them away. Yeah, you can take that five times. Exactly. So it's really like taking it no times if you think yeah. about it. So, um, yeah, so I love that. I don't know. I was always a huge fan of the art too, because for some reason I I really liked the, the old you know those derpy Swamp Thing movies back in the day. It looked like Swamp Thing. It totally. looked exactly like it was Swamp Thing. Like you're yeah. looking, you're like, I want to beat it was people a in the less face. Detailed Swamp Thing. Yes, it, like it, it was less detailed in that it could just just barely get by copyright law. Right. You know, like so you you really need the, the reprint of this to have like a good comic book artist who does Swamp Thing, do the exact same pose, but like a really detailed comic book, you know? Yeah. Yep. That would be amazing. Yep, 100%. That, like, that would be... See, there we go. We're bringing it back around full circle. That's a proxy I would pay for. So Yeah, mm. abso- I, I would. Yeah. If I could get like a Jim Lee or somebody like that to, to do a uh, <laughs> Force of Nature, that would be great. Yeah, like a Force of Nature Swamp Thing or maybe a yeah. Man Thing. I don't know. Man thing might be more on top of it because isn't man thing the one that burns you? Like if you're f- scared of it, yes. I think. So that would if rob. You're, if you're scared of it, if yeah. you're scared, I'm so scared of it. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I suddenly became like a bad Italian stereotype in the middle of that. My bad. So, um, so that was Force of Nature. My other one is that's one of my favorite derpy ass cards. And this card, yeah, is so I like st- it. I did not choose it for a very good reason. I mean, it is on the reprint policy, and I can understand why we don't. Um. <laughs> But man, 
Raging River. God, yeah, this is one of my favorite cards. It's so stupid too. The flavor. The flavor. <laughs> it is. It has all the flavor, right? All the flavor. <laughs> so it's a it's a two two red uh, enchantment. It's red, obviously. Uh, and whenever one or more creatures you control attack, each defending player divides all creatures without flying he or she controls into a left pile and a right pile. Then, for each attacking creature you control, choose left or right. That creature can't be blocked this combat except by creatures with flying and creatures in a pile with the chosen label. So, yes, you do get by this by literally having flying on anything. Um, yeah. <laughs> but... You know what? I, <laughs> the, the thing that actually makes this card more confusing than anything... Because I, I love this card. It is fantastic. But what makes it more confusing than anything else is that one player chooses left and right, the other player chooses left and right, and they both have different lefts and rights. And so you'll literally <laughs> block in an X pattern. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a little... Yeah. It gets confused. In a multiplayer format, this is not ideal. So... Because then you have to be... Wait, wait. Who, who's picking left? Like, you almost need, like, yeah. little meeples or something with L and R on their heads to just, like, divide up the piles at some point. Um, I like it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like, this and... I, I can't remember what the other red enchantment is that, all like, all creatures lose flying. Um... I think it's like gravity. There's a few of them. Gravity sphere. Right? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking the really expensive one. I think would be gravity sphere. Yeah. Um, I really also want to build like this. Makes me want to build like a red enchantress deck, um, which would be bad, but would yeah, also yeah. I don't know. It would definitely include both of those things. Fair um, enough. And then of course, again, bringing him up to the top, I would have to proxy gravity sphere because that fucking card's ridiculous at this point is it stupid expensive raging oh, river 60 dollars. yeah i know raging river it's like what are we doing what are we doing raging river um oh actually gravity sphere i take it back gravity sphere is less than that gravity sphere is only 45 yeah. so yeah. okay you can also i believe play chaos sphere oh yeah that is true yeah that's i don't um, remember if it exactly works th- oh it, it flip-flops them so yeah i mean chaos sphere is good yeah i actually just put chaos sphere in a um ton of the blood sower deck so nice yeah i'm like okay that's pretty cool so and that card is five bucks like what are we doing yeah well because it's it's reserve list it's gonna start (sighs) creeping up like you've already seen it go past legends like the next the next set after legends uh have already started to see yeah the dark the dark has already started to see the effects of it yeah you know it's sad we're gonna see it through mirage yeah that's that's really sad but yep um, I would, I mean, we don't, we don't like to spec on cards here, but yo, if you, if there's some cards in Mirage that you really like that are on the reserve list, it's now, his reserve list, absolutely. I yeah, mean, you now would be a time to pick them up. Can. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, uh, moving back to the original pick. Yeah. Raging River is amazing. Um, I play in a Goto deck cause it feels yep. like a very bandit thing to me. Like a bandit warlord would definitely do that to someone. You know, right. they were to range forces on either side of a river, so it's pretty dope. I right. never understood why they didn't put Raging River and like reprint it in some way in Portal Three Kingdoms. You know, mm-hmm. yeah, that seems like it would be natural, but eh, whatever. Just like take the like you know, like take the flying bit off. I don't know, creatures with horsemanship can't. But right, no, right, know. that's true. Yeah. Actually, yeah. That, well, I I think again because it makes a more in unneeded complex board state i think is the reason sure which they weren't worried about at all in alpha beta and unlimited so it's fine <laughs> well no they were not <laughs> um so next um again we're gonna skip right over fourth edition here um mostly because adam talked a little bit about it, but those are just reprints so we're gonna yeah. go into the very first expansion for magic arabian nights all so. right so i also tried to think about what is likely to get be, so I, I tried to not just pick all rares. I did unfortunately pick mostly non creatures because Jesus, the creatures are bad from early <laughs> just, on. Yeah, we just I think can't. I'll make up for it in the in the like later sets, but the early ones uh, I went I went pretty spell heavy. Oh yeah, they're pretty stinky. Yeah. So I went with two commons. They can both be reprinted, and they are both you know uh, fine in a you know in a set like this and i think could see play in edh so my first one is metamorphosis uh it is one green for a sorcery that says an as an additional casting cost to cast metamorphosis sacrifice creature add x mana t- of any one color to your mana pool where x is one plus the sacrifice creatures converted mana cost that's pretty Spend important this mana only to cast creatures yeah that definitely puts it above sacrifice for instance you know, yeah, 
which mm-hmm. does almost the same thing except it's not plus one. So right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is this is a totally playable card. Uh, if you already have the card in hand, then this plays like an Eldritch Evolution or something like that. You know, Birthing Pod. Obviously, it doesn't allow you to search them out. But like I said, I mean, if you've got, you know, a five drop on the battlefield and you're on turn six and you want to play Ulamog, you know, you play your land, sack your five drop, you got an Ulamog. You know, this is, this is a fine card. Yeah. I I mean, as as with most things, I wish it was an instant. But even so, like then you could yeah. only use it. You know, then you could only use it during that particular phase. So, well, that's the thing. I mean, like if it was an instant, then you couldn't cast creature spells with it. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I guess you'd have to do like you'd have to wait to play some dumbass like me who would just who just kills creatures during main phases. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> And that's not. Don't wait for. You're not going to find a. a, You're not going to find someone like me. It's fine. Other people (laughs) are smarter, and they will not do these things. Other people don't exclusively play things during their first main phase, like I do. So yeah, no, that's 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 bad. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, what's your second card? My second second card is Oubliette. Yes. Yeah, Oubliette desperately needs a reprint. First of all, so pauper pauper people have been complaining about this for a while. I don't think that it ends up I, I, to to satisfy the pauper people. It would have to end up getting reprinted. No, no, no. It could be reprinted as an uncommon in this set because it was once printed at common. It can still be played in pauper. But Oubliette is running at forty five dollars right now for a common from Arabian Nights. <sighs> Fucking a. I know. So this <sighs> is an enchantment for one black black. When Oubliette enters the battlefield, exile target creature and all auras. Ad- attached to it. Note the number and kind of counters that were on that creature. When it leaves the battlefield, basically the creature comes back with all of that stuff on it. So it's it's a very weird O-ring, banishing light, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, that just doesn't make all the stuff that they had attached to that creature, including counters, uh, fall off of it. Uh, yeah. It does make equipment fall off of it. That is nice. equipment didn't exist back then. Also true. Um... So, yeah, I mean, look, I would love to see this card back in in black because, you know, an O-ring in black sounds great to me. Uh, it's $45. It does not need to be $45. It's a common. It's not on the reserved list. Just just give this to the people. <laughs> Print it at uncommon and give it to the people. Yes. There we go. Um, we were very popular around here at Commander Cast. Uh, yeah. I always forget this is not a rare. I always forget this is not on the reserve yeah. list. Like I look at this and I look at the price and I'm like, of course it's on the reserve list. And I'm like, oh, what the fuck? So yeah. yeah, so good, so good. I uh, I do own a copy of this card because of course I play it in Commander ninety five. Um, I no, did not nice. purchase yeah. it at forty five dollars. You know, I mean, this is an old one I own from like back in the day. Um, right, but it is cool that like. You know what also I, I like most about looking back at Magic's past is like you can see when like this O-ring effect, which is now rather common in white, first came right. about. And it, interesting to see that it was originally not a white effect, right? Yeah. That's really cool. And then it kind of like, it also kind of fell off because between Oubliette and O-ring, like there's several years. There's probably a good like 10 years, I think, in between those two. Because yeah, O-ring was what, first in Lorwyn? Is I that right? I believe so, Yeah. That's the first right, time I, mean, I remember in that it. block. I don't, I don't know that it was in that set. Right, yeah. but I mean, that's what early two thousands. So yeah, right, right. Oh no, I mean, it, it, there was a long time between them. Yeah, but yeah, I, th- I think giving giving Oubliette back is a very good idea. It's a safe play. It's not going to break anything. It's not like you know stores are even going to lose that much money because they're not sitting on like hundreds of copies of Oubliette. <laughs> yeah, it's not like people are cracking a lot of packs of Arabian Nights. So right, yeah. right. So just you know, yeah, just deal give, with it. Give people. the people what you can. You know what they can't get? Uh, don't tell me. I just yeah. I know. I, I want this too. This card's amazing. I, speaking of like originally black effects that went to white too, right? Yeah. Because yeah. The, the color shifted version of this is I don't know fifty cents in white. Um, but yeah. Guardian Beast is a four mana, three colorless and a black beast. Uh, actually, Guardian. Now, sorry, it was originally summoned Guardian. Now it's just a beast. Now it's beast. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a two four. But again, you don't play that for any of that. Uh, the cool part about it is that as long as Guardian Beast is untapped, non-creature artifacts you control can't be enchanted, they have indestructible, and other players can't gain control of them. This effect doesn't remove auras already attached to those artifacts. So, 
Man, I love this card back in the day. This was literally yeah. one of my favorite cards ever printed back yeah. in the 90s. It's so good. I still remember, um, even in the 90s, this was rather expensive for me. I think I remember buying, this is the first card that I ever like bought on the side market, like not through a store. Like I bought right. it from my best friend's uncle who was really into magic. Right. And it was like $20 at the time. And I'm like, oh my God, fucking $20. And again, this is like the yeah. old man cast, but just fucking deal with it. People were talking about 25 years yeah. of magic. Um, now it is $300. So yeah, I I was gonna buy it when it was at like seventy, which was not that long ago. Believe yeah, it or not. well, it, that could have been like last year. In fact, I think it, it was. was it was year. like three years ago, I think. But yeah, <sighs> you know, and the sad part is that even if I get like one of those cheap proxies, like it's not gonna do what the original did because the original you could totally cheat and play this for one black because you can't really see the three colorless. <laughs> it was it was the best. I did that many times. I'm a bad human being. I don't give a cheating, shit. Cheating aside. <laughs> yes, cheating aside. Um, man, this is a good card. This is so good. The um, Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, I, I like this card. I love the art. Like, this this was, I, I don't know. I think of this as, like, the great <laughs> start of purple on black cards. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> that is a good that is a good point too. Um, yeah, it's it's really neat. Like, there's just it, it had to be purple, right? Because the card is so dark. Like, yeah. Arabian Nights, like the printing on those cards is so fucking dark. Yeah, you know, it's just like somebody just like turned down the turned up the contrast or down the brightness, however you want to phrase it, on the printing press, and just said like, "Yeah, go for it." Zack Snyder's first show, but um, <laughs> no, really good. But yeah, yeah, really I lo- I love this card. I I think that your next pick is much more likely. Uh, and and I can get down on it. Yeah. Uh, so City of Brass is my next pick. City of Brass. I still love the Arabian Nights original. That sure. one is $320. Yep. Um, yep. So don't do that. <laughs> but the nice part is the the Chronicles version of the art, and I still like the original art best. Um, the Mark Tedden art, I think, is my favorite. Yeah. Uh, and the and the Chronicles version is 7 bucks, so which yeah. is only slightly less than the... It just got reprinted in that modern event deck with uh, Elspeth right. not too long ago, and that one is six ninety nine. So you're paying seven bucks for this city of brass. If you don't know, it's uh, it's a land. Whenever city of brass becomes tapped, it deals one damage to you, and you just tap it to add one man of any color to your mana pool. And I think at this point they might even be able to downshift this to uncommon. I mean, I at this point it was uncommon in Arabian Nights, so you're really right. Kind of- I, I think it can go for a downshift again because we we have so many powerful lands that I mean, a city of brass isn't that impressive anymore. No. Yeah, I mean, City of Brass is something that I always put in my decks. I, I, I must own 20 copies of this card if I own one. I never put this in decks. I always put this in decks. One of us is wrong. <laughs> I think... I mean, Adam, it's all right. You can admit when you're wrong, so it's fine. It's, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's, don't worry about it. Um, they can twiddle you to death. When the fuck does that happen? When, is that, when has that ever been a thing? I said words. <laughs> They can twiddle you to death. <laughs> I don't like. There's so much wrong with that sentence. I'm like, I, on on so many different levels. I just I don't want to get into. But man, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just I don't foresee the problems of this. The beauty of commanders is that you have 40 life points. One damage means nothing. I'm still a person who, when we get to Ice Age, like I love the the dual colored, like the pain lands. Um. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I don't, and like if the pain lands are playable, I don't see how this is not playable. Like they're, this is literally better than any of the pain lands. In the wise words of Ron Swanson, I know what I'm about, son. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I, I should stop. It's 2018. I should stop trying to talk logically or, or make arguments in support of my cause. I just need. Oh to, God, don't do that. So, like I, just, I just don't. You're, yeah, you're I just like going to be a, like a pariah. Yeah, I just. Point. I don't do that. I will say, and I have to say this because we're old. Um, the fact that you suffer the one damage when with the original. Oh yeah, the original. We, oh god, some of the wording on the originals. And it's only in Arabian budget. Nights, I think. Like it, it's Desert Twister. This one, like suffering the damage, Wait, is, is so Desert, much worse. What did Desert Twister say? Desert Twister, you suffer damage too. The original. No, one. Desert Twister. You're thinking of the wrong card. Desert what? Twister destroys target permanent. Oh, then what am I thinking? Hurricane, maybe. Maybe we're thinking. Yeah, of, thinking might, it might be that. Yeah, I guess I was thinking Desert Twister because Arabian Nights, but uh, yeah, there's um, yeah, suffering the damage is much yeah, worse than just yeah. taking damage. So we all know that. Um, but life is suffering, so we have to move on. 
Um, yeah. Next one. So we covered Arabian Nights, which is a phenomenal set. But now with the addition of Antiquities, we can finally talk about some goofy artifacts. And God damn it, Adam, you didn't pick a single fucking artifact here. I didn't. What the, what the shit, man? <laughs> most of most of them are either bad or banned. Or uh, I'm sorry, bad or or uh, bad or broken, policy. broken in half. I think is what you meant to say. Well, yeah, but those are all. Um, re- oh God, what is the, the term? It's a thing. What the reserve list? list? No, only one of my picks is, and the other one has literally been printed like eight times. So yeah, but that's why that's why I didn't. Pick, I mean, it's been reprinted ah, eight thousand. Fine, really you're just one? a goddamn hipster. So go on with your hipster picks over here. I mean, not, my first one is not hipster. <laughs> like, my first one is the Urzatron lands. Yeah. Um, so if you don't know what they do, you've got Urza's Mine, Power Plant, and Tower. Urza's Mine, all of them tap for one colorless. Or colorless, right? Yeah, colorless. Yeah. Um, and then if you control all three of them, then the Mine and the Power Plant tap for two colorless, and the Tower taps for three colorless. So good. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's it's always been, right? Like, I remember playing with these back in the day and just like, I'm going to Urzatron and Land of War Elves and then Fireball. Yeah, like that was just a win con. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the Urzatron lands uh, are my first pick. I think that it's, you know, they're not on the reserve list. They're played in EDH. They're easy to print at common, honestly. Oh, yeah. Like in, in a set like this, you just throw them at common. They were in common originally. So. Right, exactly. Yep. Um you know, they're, they see play in Modern. I'm pretty sure they see play in Legacy. You know, each one is not even very expensive because they were in Chronicles. They're five uh, bucks. But look at it. They're five bucks. Are you kidding me? When no, I'm not. I'm not kidding. They're five bucks a piece. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay, eighth, it does depend a oh, little bit on the edition. You're right. Okay, so fifth edition is three dollars, and it looks like the Chronicles version is like a buck thirty. Chronicles the cheapest. They're like a dollar fifty. Okay, so I was looking at this. Is I have I have the two ninth edition one. Yeah, I have two controversial statements. One is that I like the ninth edition art the best. He uh, is wrong. I it think is the known. I think the fact that they are worth the most, aside from the antiquities originals, is is uh, an argument in my favor. So is it? I believe so because the original art, the Anson Maddox original art, even though I do like Anson Maddox, is kind of garbage. Um, <gasps> kind of all like seriously. Do you want to take? Okay, one of them is literally Anson Maddox didn't do all the art. He, okay, so I'm looking at uh, specifically like Urza's mind because I think that is some of the worst art. Um, yo, yeah, Mark fu- Mark Tedden did all the power plants. Uh, Anson Maddox did all of the mines and Mark Poole did all of the towers. Okay. Mark Poole, definitely not my favorite artist, but since it's Commander Cast and we can bitch about art, fucking just take a look at the original art for Urza's Mine, number 76. It's literally Yoda. It's a blue Yoda with a pickaxe going into a fucking face. To just d- defend it. Well, first of all, if you just described that to anybody. <laughs> That's, that's what it is. Like the coolest thing that ever it's happened. not the coolest thing. It makes no sense. It makes it's it's like a weird Dada painting that just got stuck on a card by accident. Yeah, and number seventy seven is amazing. So number seventy seven is number seventy seven just reminds me of I don't know anyone out there who's playing Subnautica at the moment can probably relate. Like that's what it looks like <laughs> to me. And it's just I just no I just all don't, right. I don't. Well, let's just do, anyway. we agree to disagree on the art. It's fine. Yeah. And Which is something strong. we have to do all the time. And that they should reprint the Earth's Tron Lands. What is your first pick from Antiquities, sir? <sighs> oh, uh, second thing about Earth's Tron before we go in. I have never actually made Earth's Tron happen. Oh, really? <laughs> never in my entire life. I mean, uh, d- I back in the day? In EDH. Or I here? I, I have never made that happen. I've come close. I, I I almost had it. I had the third card in my hand when I died, <laughs> um, and I I I was so much matter at the fact that I never got Urzatron in that game, rather than that I died. I'm just like, really? Could you not just let one more fucking turn go around? Really? Could you not? This is literally a lifetime achievement for me. Yes, I know that says bad things about my life, but fuck you. You didn't let me get Urzatron. I was I was legit pissed at that one. But anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, Thanos's coffin. Thanos' Coffin is a fucking amazing... It's an amazing card that I wish was reprinted, but it's never going to be because it's on their official reprint policy, and now it's $80. And, yeah. Uh, anyway. Four colorless uh, mono artifact from back in the day. You may choose... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step away while you read that. Yeah. 
Uh, <laughs> you may choose not to untap Thomas's coffin during your untap step. You can pay three and tap it to exile target creature and all ores attached to it. Note the number and kind of counters that are on that creature. When Thomas's coffin leaves the battlefield or becomes untapped, return that exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control, tapped with the noted number and kind of counters on it. If you do, return the other exiled cards to the battlefield under their owner's control attached to that permanent. Oh, thanks. I just finished reading Ulysses. How are you doing? That's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got a I brick mean, attack. the reading of that card. Yes. It was It was a spirited reading. So, you know, normally I reserve um, uh, a podium at my local library when I have a reading yeah. of Thanos' coffin. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, man, this is great. I mean, and the, the thing is, you know, it's it's great in an artifact deck for just removal that you otherwise can't get. And it's it's amazing in a blink deck. So yeah, no, this is a great card there. Like being able to blink things, but like reserve them for when you want them to come back in, you know, so that you can blow up stuff and then have something on the back burner. I, I love this card. Yeah. It's amazing. This is a card that I, I, I would legitimately, if I could find a good proxy of it, I would buy it in a heartbeat just because I own, yeah. I only own the one copy and I'm too lazy to go search it out of my commander 95 deck and put it yeah, in actual other yeah. decks. I you mean, know. I only have one copy of it also, and it's, yeah, it's very good. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, what was your second one, Adam? Your second so, non-artifact card from the artifact set. <laughs> it's a blue card. <laughs> it does have the word artifact on it. It deals with artifacts. There oh. you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it is Hercules Recall, a blue and one for an instant that says return all artifact, all artifacts target player owns to his or her hand. Yeah. That's it. Nice, nice and simple. It's very good. Uh, you know, makes makes my like eggs and Cheerios storm decks go, and it's good times. Yeah, it's great. It's been reprinted a whole bunch of times uh, since then. It has. Yeah. It just yeah. recently got reprinted in Modern Masters 2015. Yep. Um, you're gonna say you like the original art better, aren't you? Uh, I don't think that I can say that I like any of the art. <laughs> I mean, I don't like the I don't like any of the art either. I would take the 10th edition art, even though. I mean, what the fuck is the 10th edition? I don't know. Art? I might go with the original one just because I can't tell what's going on in the 10th edition art. Okay. It's not that it's like I, I like the other one. I just I literally have no idea what's going on. I have an interpretation for you for the 10th yep. edition art. Ready? All right. Because uh-huh. like, I'm not really sure what's going on in the antiquities art, but like that doesn't that also doesn't say the antiquities return. Antiquities art is just some chick putting like a curio in a box. I mean, it's not like. I mean, it's a little on the nose in that she's it apparently it's looks like she's Hercule recalling. Something. Yeah, it looks like she's literally returning an artifact to her hand. So right, okay, points for that, I suppose. Um, but the tenth edition art, I can't really describe it um, other than to say there's a there's a thing that looks like like okay. So you remember the the ten thousand leagues under the sea or twenty thousand leagues under the sea? You know, Captain Nemo's submarine. Yeah. So it looks like a personification of Captain Nemo's submarine eating a Christmas tree uh, with a bunch of starry-eyed, like, space on top of it. So I think if Captain Nemo dropped acid and went for a little undersea well, voyage... Say, like, so this is just a that's, trip? Like, yes, that's that's, that's, that is my interpretation of this. This is just like he accidentally... I don't know, like, he he ate some kind of mold on some potatoes that were in the... the I don't know, a bilge pump or something, and then this is what happened. So, so that is probably intended to be some creature that I don't know from the lore. Like, I, I don't know whether it's meant to be one of the dragon engines or a juggernaut or something like that, and then I, I can I can interpret the they're kind of wisping away into you know the ether, but sure. um, it ain't good. Yeah, no, it ain't and, good. And why why it has to be on an angle, I can't tell you. <laughs> just yep, I don't know. But it is a really good card. So yeah. one card was in a blue instant to uh to zap all the artifacts back to hand. Yeah, that's real good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Your next one was on my short list. I can't believe you didn't put this on here. But I, I understand. Right. <laughs> your next one was on my short list. Yeah. But um, it has been reprinted just like last year. That is true, and I picked up a whole bunch of them because I really liked Eternal Masters, the, yeah, the Eternal yeah. Masters art for this. Um, and it deserved one, too, because, like, other than that, yeah. you'd have to go back to Classic Sixth, yeah, which wasn't that classic, to be honest. Um, no. So, Ashnod's Altar is, um, I don't know, would you call it just combo fuel? Like, degenerate combo oh, fuel? Oh, yeah, I mean, this is this is a P... Well, I mean, any sack outlet has that ability, but a sack yeah. outlet that ramps you is... Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so if anyone who doesn't know, uh, Ashdown's Altar is a three colorless poly artifact. It's important. Um, you sac- Its ability is real simple. You sack a creature, add two colorless mana to your mana pool. So it's amazing. Yeah. The only thing I don't like about the reprint is it has the goddamn wing- wingdings on it. So Yeah, I could, yeah. I could do I without mean, the wingdings. If that's what they're going with for the rest of Magic, then that's what we're going with. It's I fine. just don't... I don't know. I would rather have like the classic, like the fifth and sixth edition, where they like spell it out for you, right? So, oh, actually, they all do right. that in, in all the other copies too, so it's fine. So now we're moving into Legends, which Legends. Okay, I, I have a lot of caveats here. <laughs> Legends is a great set. I think they should reprint the entire thing. It's really good, just in its entirety. Uh, and there's so many commanders in it that can be used for EDH, and all of them are on the reserved list. Yep. So I didn't pick any of those. Yeah, I didn't. I did the. No, opposite I didn't of pick that. any legendary creatures out of legends. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're, I, you're gonna see a theme here. <laughs> that I I kind of went against the grain of a lot of these. I mean, hey, um, I, my other pick is not on the reserve list. So you, yes, one of your picks is not on the reserve list, and I agree with that one 100. percent Yeah. So I I kind of split the difference here. So yeah. So uh, my first one is greed. Phenomenal card. Yeah, uh, it is three and a black for an enchantment that says pay a black, pay two life, and draw a card. Yeah, uh, The simplest card, very powerful. Uh, I honestly think that in a master's set, this might be able to see a shift to uncommon. It would be a tough one. Because you, you definitely don't want to see a lot of players playing greed because they can they can roll you over real quick. Yeah, I am really glad. I was so happy to see this get a reprint in the Commander 2013 edition. Yeah, like so happy, and I even love the the artwork. I mean, the classic artwork from Legends is the best artwork because yo he's oh a Phil Folio piece <laughs> of yeah. art. Yeah, I know that's the best one. That actually used to be. Um, I think that was Andy original Andy from Commander Cast. That was like his original avatar somewhere. Right. Um, yeah, it was phenomenal. But that, that dude's just munching on all the coins. It's so good. I, I do like the commander art a lot. I think they did a great job taking an old art concept and just revamping it with, with beautiful rendering, and it's it's fantastic. Yes, it's it's really good. The 7th edition is shit, just like many uh, pieces uh, of art. Different? Yes, because it's 7th oh, edition. Oh, God, what? Stop it, no. <laughs> yeah, and the worst part is it looks like he has the pox. Or something like what's going on with his yeah, face? Yeah, something going on in his face. I, not... I mean, there's probably some kind of lore there that I'm not aware of. But like, no, no, I guess. Like, I've seen the Western Paladin, who's the one who's referenced on here. Right, yeah, he yeah, did yeah. not look like that. So I don't know. But whatever, greed is the best. So I want to pay one black and two life and draw a card. So yeah, no, it's a great card. Uh, I actually really do hope that this is one of the picks out of Legends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That would be a, that would be a great pick. So, yeah. And again, there's what is no reason not your to. Your first one from Legends. Uh, my first one from Legends is my favorite Legend, uh, which I've talked about a million times. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. But yeah. man, I like to weave some dreams, Adam. Yeah, Dreamweaver. I, really like I mean, it. like if 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 it was possible, then I want it. Yeah. Rasputin Dreamweaver, four colorless, one white, one blue. Uh, Rasputin Dreamweaver enters the battlefield with seven dream counters on it. Remove a dream counter from Rasputin, add one colorless to your mana pool. Remove a dream counter from Rasputin, pay w- the next, or prevent the one, the next one damage that would be dealt to Rasputin this turn. Uh-huh. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Rasputin started the turn untapped, put a dream counter on it. Rasputin can't have more than seven dream counters on it. That's good. That's real good. He literally yep. makes more mana than he costs. Yep. So, yeah. That one's de- Like, for a whole host of reasons, that's never going to get reprinted, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there, there, there's just never, ever going to happen. Um, like, can you imagine a format where this and Urzatron were both? Oh in? Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, you know, it's ridiculous. Um, but it's also an amazing card. So, yep. Probably don't pay seventy dollars for it, but I'm not going to lie. Like, this is so unique. This might be the one. Uh, I know. I, I like. I've thought about it. I'll be <laughs> I, honest. I, yeah, I thought about it too. Like, I, I already own a copy of this card, and I looked at it, and I'm like, mm, I could probably buy another one. Like, yeah. So I do not have one, so it is really, really good. Yeah. Um, but what is your second card, Adam? And actually, you scooped me on this one because when I was doing beside, oh, behind the scenes, at this? folks, yeah. yeah, like we we did our list separately, and then we came together. And I like that because um, 
you know, Adam and I obviously have different points of view and perspectives on it, but sometimes, like, he totally scooped me on a couple, and this is definitely one he scooped me on. Well, honestly, this and your second pick were kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> they were definitely right there. Yeah. Um, so mine is Sylvan Library. One in a green for an enchantment that says, at the beginning of your draw step, you may draw two additional cards. If you do, choose two cards in your hand drawn this turn... For each of those cards, pay for life or put the card back on top of your library. All right. <laughs> Fucking I got it. There's a lot card. going on here. Oh, this card is so good. This card is so it, good. It is. And you like, can game the system and people don't, but you can. How Technically, you, if you have multiple other card draws, like if you brainstormed or something like that, mm-hmm. and then you go to your draw step, you can put da- you can put back any of the ones that you drew from the other draws. Oh, interesting. Huh. Because it's just cards that you drew this turn. That's true. So if you do something during your upkeep, then you can... I, I mean, it's a niche little like use of the rules, but you, you can do that. Sure. This card is just good. I mean, like, almost... It is easy to say almost every green commander deck should have this card. Yeah, this is actually, I mean, I only, I think I own like two copies of this card. And honestly, like, I always think like, I should buy more. You know? Yeah, I only have one, uh, but I mean, I only have one of everything, so. Oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. Um, Yeah, like, I, and the original art is so good, like that, that Harold McNeil weird, like, like that otherworldly, like surreal thing that he does. Yeah, I, for so many years, I had no idea what was actually going on in that art. I, it looked like man thing. Yes, it did. Yes, it actually, did. <laughs> to bring it back around to Force of Nature, yes, it totally right, does look like yeah. man thing. It um, lo- But... Yeah, the card's cool. The Eternal Masters artwork is is nice for it too. Also true. Uh, yeah, not as good, but still really good. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And uh, yeah, I don't know if you have to though. Like, this is one of the rare times that like the old version is actually cheaper than the new version. Like, Sylvan Library Fourth and Fifth Edition are actually slightly cheaper than the brand new Eternal Masters ones. So, yeah, yeah. Um, which is weird, but well, because their white border, I think, is really what's going on there. Yeah, and this is I was I was really shocked for a second. <laughs> you ever, you know how when Magic Cards that info just kind of burps and like oh nope. yeah yeah it like we, you into it. It, yeah. it was a mother of runes so. yeah <laughs> yeah it's not I, I it's not two dollars because I like I had that moment when I when I clicked on it and I'm like oh my god this is too t-, like the the Commander's Arsenal version when I clicked on it showed the mother of runes um yeah card and it was two dollars and twenty cents and I swear to God my I I immediately opened a new tab and I was gonna buy one. So, <laughs> yeah. just like it was just like an instant right? like, yep, is two dollars right i would buy one right now oh my god yeah um but so good like it, it's just like adam said it's hard to to say you shouldn't run this in any single deck that runs green that's how yeah. good this card is um much like you could probably make a really compelling argument to, that any white deck would run land tax yep which is my pick um and still again i always think this is on the reserve list not on the reserve list i know so I don't know. Uh, land tax is real simple. It's one colorless en- enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. If an opponent controls more lands than you, you may search a library for up to three basic lands, reveal them, put them into your hand. If you do, shuffle your library. It's white filtering and ramp and everything that you need in white. It's one white. It goes in every white deck. We're done here. Yeah. So good. It's just good. I mean, yeah. the art's stupid looking because that that mustache though <laughs> yeah that might yeah that's really good what do you think of the judge gift the the judge promo one? Oh, does it have different art yeah it has a it has really cool art actually it's like a i don't i still don't know that it conveys no it doesn't convey tax but like i guess yeah, i mean it's, it's kind of interesting art i mean that land tax art for the judge promo looks like it should have been in ixalan that is also true too yeah i'm not sure what the hell is going on with that one it's also, a pirate's treasure chest that's all that is uh, yeah I don't. I don't really understand the tax angle. Are you like? Because this is not a tax you're paying. That's for sure. Like you're not. Oh, I don't. That's I mean, not how like, tax yeah. works. Like taxes, and that you get more resources. That's not how my taxes work. Um, maybe you're taxing the other person. Is that how the? I've never really figured out the tax angle here, but I like getting more cards. So yeah, no, I have no idea. And this is just one of the few ways you actually can in in mono white. So yeah. Just go with it. It's really good. Like, I would even put this... This is so good, I would probably still put this even in, like, a green-white deck where there are better ways to ramp, but sometimes you still want to ramp a lot. So... Yeah. Yeah. It's just very good. Uh, like, I did have to give a a bonus card here. 
Yeah, you cheated. It's not it's not cheating because I want it to be a token. Pretty sure you cheated. But that's all right, it's fine. I, I want yeah. it to be a token. Okay. So we got what what is the prosh? We got a prosh deck that did not come with any of the tokens that it makes, right? I believe that is I believe that is true. So. It did not come with Kobolds of Kerr Keep, and this was from Legends, and they're two dollars, and honestly, making those tokens that are even potentially foil tokens in in this kind of set, like that's something that those players need. There are things that make Kobolds of Kerr Keep tokens, and it's not just Prosh, but it's mostly Prosh. Yeah. Um that I, I think that this would be a great token to add to the set, honestly. Yeah. I also agree. Very, very good. All right. Next set is the dark. Oh, uh, the most powerful. It is the most powerful of all the sets. Um, if Commander Cast has taught me nothing else, it is that cards from the dark are more powerful than cards that were not printed in the dark. So what? <laughs> that is that's the truth. That's an empirical truth. Is there um, an in joke that I don't understand? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just Andy used to say that all the time because he had that thing oh, okay. with with, di- with giant shark. So yeah. Yeah, because there was a thing where Andy, like everyone on the internet, sent Andy giant sharks, and like, you know, for a long time there was a, there was a, not like I've ever, not like I've ever actually gone to confirm this, but there was a rumor that he would just leave like giant shark cards on like I don't know public benches in Toronto, <laughs> <laughs> you know, or he would just like he, he would he would put giant sharks as like the backing of his cards because he would use the little penny sleeves, you know. Right. So like his whole deck would be giant sharks. Um, yeah, they they had a thing with giant shark. So it's a little commander casty. So all right, so my first one is probably more disturbing and more dark looking than any of the other cards in the dark, in my opinion. Ooh, you think so? Yeah. I mean, all right, it's Maybe. definitely weird. Maze of If is my pick. It is a land that says tap to untap, target attacking creature, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to and dealt by that creature this turn. Uh, yeah, you don't think that dude crawling through an intestine maze is the creepiest thing in that set? <laughs> I don't see the dude, I think, is the problem. I don't get maze well, out of this. How do you not see the dude? Where's the dude? You can see his spine. Like, it's right in the center there. That's, like, his arms. Like, like okay. That's not his arm. That's just some tentacles coming out of that shit. No, there's arms. There's a head. There's a spinal column right there. Okay, I don't see any of this. I see intestines. <laughs> I don't want to definitely. my screen so much right now. I'm looking, I'm looking at it. Right, I have looked at this card for... It, I've gazed at this card so many times. That is a guy crawling through intestines. I don't see I, anything that looks like a dude we're getting, in this art. We're getting the wife second look here. Okay. She's got to put stuff down. Out, <laughs> it, it, that's fine. Get an outside, an outside um, you know, consultant here. I'm just saying, like, Where? that is the creepiest card art in I this I see set. no dude. I see intestines all over the place. There's no dude. She's, she's making good radio. She's being very silent. Yes. Well, I mean, this <laughs> is serious. So. That is something crawling through intestines. It does Damn, have the shape though. of a person with like the knees up and the this feet. is knees. They're this is feet. Yeah. What see? are you people talking about? I don't know. Is Adam paying you? This has to be. <laughs> this has to be the case. <laughs> so, he said, "Is Adam paying you?" <laughs> <laughs> don't. So anyway, this, okay. This is this is my pick. Uh, this card is a staple in Commander. I think that it can definitely use a reprint. Yes, it was reprinted in Eternal Masters and from the vaults. Who cares? Um, <laughs> you know, adding more of these to the world is still a good thing. Yeah, um, yeah, I love this card. It's actually it's actually pretty cheap. I mean, relatively for a card this this old or like an effect this good, it's only ten yeah. bucks. You know, for the Eternal yeah, Masters. Yeah, absolutely. Version. I mean, the Eternal Masters one is only ten dollars. Which, oh my god, your next one is that expensive? Yeah. Yeah. What happened? I know. That's what I mean. This is ridiculous. Um, so keeping the, the theme of the lands from the dark, which I would say lands from the dark is when lands started, and not when they started to get really good because we're totally overlooking dual lands as a thing, but um, yeah. can, like niche lands, I think, uh, is when they started to get really good. So City yeah. of Shadows is my first pick. And I've talked about this ad nauseum on the cast because it's one of my favorite cards ever printed. Um, and I have a million copies of it and I want to get some more, even though they're like 13 bucks right now. What the fuck? Um, oh, they're reserved. That's why. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. I didn't realize that. I I did not think this card was on the reserve list. Yeah, ironic, right? Because 
like Mazovith is always the one that I think of is on the uh, is on the reserve list, but it's not because it was printed yeah, no. in common. <laughs> and City of Shadows is for some reason a rare, but whatever. We don't we can't ascribe logical motivations to the old things that happened in Magic, so it's fine. Um, City of Shadows is real simple. It comes in and does absolutely nothing. Which is great. It's a great start to a land. Yeah, um, yep, yep. Solid. And you have to tap it to exile a creature you control to put a storage counter on City of Shadows. And then you can tap it to add one colorless to your mana pool for each storage counter on City of Shadows. So, long story short, just it, it's real simple. You put this in token decks, and then you put this in counters matter decks, and you have a lot of fun. Or even in Marin decks. That is true. Yep, you can put it in that too. Um yeah. I I usually don't play it in graveyard decks because it is explicitly does not let me put things in the graveyard unless there are things like one of your one oh, of your later oh, picks. Oh, sorry, remove from the, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, mind. I That's mean stupid. you could don't do that, that in you could do that like if you if you have things that you're reanimating that make tokens. For example, yeah. like you you have one later on. Um, yeah, like from Homelands, for instance, which I actually do do that. Um, you're right fair enough you know yeah. because that's the best use for them actually like i pair these those two cards together like it's going on a style um but city of shadows is really good and uh, right. uh, sadly sad to say but like if you want a copy of this like you should probably pick it up now because it's only going to get more expensive yeah yeah so uh what's your second card adam so my second card desperately needs some new artwork but this card <laughs> is overlooked in my opinion i think it's really good adam this um, is another one you scooped me on I swear oh, to really? God, this nice. is one of mine. This is I play this. I play like four copies of this card. I love it. I think this is great. I mean, uh, so Gaia's Touch is an enchantment for green, green. It's only fifty cents right now, so it can be a common in this new set. Yeah. Um, you may. Uh, so it, it's worded very oddly. So you, it has a zero activation. You can put a basic forest from your your hand onto the battlefield. Activate this ability anytime you can cast the sorcery and only on your turn. So basically, it allows you to play an extra land. But the land has to be a forest. That's that's the easy way to look at it. Yeah. Or you can just sacrifice it, and it adds green green to your mana pool. Now, Adam, correct me if I'm wrong. All right, yeah. because back in the day, um, there was this stupid distinction between instants and interrupts. And there I, was, and I don't recall what the timing was because, um, along with getting old, my brain has deteriorated. But, I believe it was instant interrupt mana source was were the speed categories. But in, 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 interrupt could be done at any time, right? Like you could interrupt something. That's hence the name, right? Was there any? Yeah, time? Inter- interrupt. I mean, I always just thought of it as speed. Like interrupts can can go faster than an instant. Can they go faster in a sorcery? Yes, because the original set and the way I always play this because I'm dumb and I hadn't looked at the. The Oracle text. The Oracle text says you may play this only anytime you can cast a sorcery. The original says you can play this as an interrupt. So I believe... Oh, no, no, th- but that's only to the second ability. Oh! Because it's a mana source. Oh, okay, yeah, never mind. Okay. I yeah, was thinking yeah, the ability yeah, no, the as a first, whole. The first part you have to do... It, the first during part your... is basically just saying you have to do it during your main phase because you're playing a land. Gotcha. So you're just playing an extra land. Okay, so I was taking, taking it as a whole when I should have been reading it as... As the second ability, which is the sacrifice, you can sacrifice that enchantment to add two green to your mana pool. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I think this is great because again, it it can play in like a lands deck, like an Azusa deck or something, to give you even just one more card drop. It also just later on in the game, you know, it almost acts as its own storage because you pay green green for it. Mm-hmm. Later on in the game, you need that green green back. You just sack it. Uh, I I love this card. I've always loved this card. Yeah, this card has always been good. The art has always been bad. Um, the art has always been bad. This could really use. Some, <laughs> well, I would love to see this one get reprinted because I think it's a it's a fantastic card. It's common from the dark, so it's easy to reprint, and you just need a new a new face on it. That's it. Yeah, it's so good. Like it's hard to underestimate how good this is in just a mono green deck. Yeah, like, this should be. I would say this should be in every mono green deck. Like it's. I don't know, but I, it's it's is it's not as useful as sylvan library only because sylvan library is one of the most useful cards in the game i think but right. man if you want to do some ramping in mono green and this is even useful outside of mono green but especially in mono green for obvious right. reasons yeah um, all right so what's your next card my next card better get uh reprinted at some point um yeah. so ashes to ashes is a one carless and two black sorcery. 
um, which is just my definition of a two for one because it, it this is about as hard as I can grok for a two for one because it literally yeah. exiles yeah. two target non artifact creatures, ashes to ashes, deals five damage to you. Yeah. So, no one really cares about the five damage. And yes, it's it's a literal two for one. And yes, you should be playing this card if you're not. And it should use the original Drew Tucker art. Yeah, never do that. I didn't even realize until we were doing the art episode that fifth edition had different art and the yeah. art is the worst. Like that's yeah. so bad. Like the Drew Tucker art is amazing. It's just yeah, I love crazy Drew water. Yeah, it's like it kind of looks like one of those close ups of a pimple. That you see in like de- like a dermatologist's oh, office or something. I was actually thinking it was very Blair Witchy. Yeah, it does have the Blair Witchy thing too. Is you know both of those things are true. I prefer the Blair Witch interpretation, um, and it's also wicked cheap. Like it is twenty eight yeah. cents from the dark. Twenty eight cents for the original. I yeah. mean, th- this card is fantastic. I totally play this in Commander. It is totally worth playing in Commander because it exiles two creatures in you black, can, in mono black. Exile two creatures for three mana. That's so good. Yep. So good. I mean, yes, it is a sorcery, but eh, whatever. Yeah, okay. And, I mean, yeah. You, and it does you damage to you. Price in there, but still. Yeah, yeah, but who cares? Like, this is right. an amazing card. So now this is- we're moving into the hottest of deck <laughs> or sets. I love these sets. They're so good. No, you don't. This, is, this Adam, is when magic really hit its stride. Adam, is this where you fell off? Because this is definitely where I gave up on magic as a game. No, I fell off. Uh, I, so when I was looking through these, I was really noticing uh, like which cards I remember. And so I thought that it was before Weatherlight, but it was really, I'm thinking, the set after Weatherlight. Like I remember seeing some of the cards, but I, I did not play with it. <laughs> I can remember I gave up, um, I think Fallen Empires came first because I have more Fallen Empires cards, and yeah. I'm like, wow, this this set sucks. Like, this game doesn't seem... And, it like, at the time, it was pretty common for, like, you know, games to Peter... Like, no game had gone on as long as Magic right. has now. Like, there, there was no equivalent back in the day. So, I'm like, oh, this is this is the downfall of Magic. This is obvious. This, right. is, this is the Fallen Empire. Or this is when... This is, like, the fall of the Roman Republic for Magic. How yeah, aptly Fallen named. Empires was a small set with, I believe, no rares... I don't. I mean, and I think it had eight card booster packs instead, and they were like only a dollar, a dollar fifty, or something like that. Yeah, they're fuck. It's so bad. And then afterwards, it, when Homelands came set. out, that's when I officially left the game forever. Homelands. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think that Fallen Empires might be worse than Homelands. I I like more it's cards hard. out of Fallen Empires than I do out of Homelands. That's not. I mean, we're really like. I don't know. Would you rather get punched in the face with like a pair of brass knuckles or like a really heavy weighted glove? Yeah, you know? fair enough. Like, okay. which one do you want? Um, but anyway, so, what, yeah, what's your anyway, first? <laughs> uh, uh, my first one is Initiates of the Ebon Hand. Um, so it's a black for a one-one cleric, and you can pay one generic to add a black to your mana pool, and you can only do that three times before you have to sacrifice him. Sure. Um, I mean, he's he's mana fixing. He's a 1-1. I think if they're looking for... Because they're looking for cards that have to be reprinted from each of the sets. Mm -hmm. And if they're looking for something from Fallen Empires to print at common in this Masters set, a little bit of mana fixing is going to be horrible. Yeah. um, That's all I got. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I I was... I, my favorite my favorite story about this card is I was at a it, recently for fucking some unknown reason like I wanted to pick up a copy of this I don't know why um, and I went into a card shop and I was like I'm like hey you know do you have an issue to the ebon hand and they're like huh and I'm like all right well I mean I'm you know, I'm looking for a card from Fallen Empires that's not that un- unreasonable they wouldn't know what the hell I'm talking about and I'm like yeah, yeah this is what it does and they're like no that's not a card. And I'm like, I literally, I literally had to have like a conversation for a, it lasted for a, better than a minute, maybe two. I'm like, no, it really is. I'm just old and I know it's really dumb and it's a common from Fallen Empires. And then finally, when I said Fallen Empires, they're like, oh, that's okay. No problem. We keep those in the back. So, so it's interesting because of the cards that would, that I would not be convinced is a real card, your first pick. Like, if, if in a vacuum, like, I'd never <laughs> seen this card before, I would not believe that this existed. Oh, I fucking love this card. And that's it's why... A, I, like, I don't dislike this card. I'm just saying, like... Oh, it's, it's stupid. It's a little out of left field. Let's be honest. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's it's extra dumb. It's also because Homerids were the worst fucking thing ever. Like I, They were, but I, I really want them to come back and actually make them decent. Because, uh, like, 
from a flavor standpoint, I mean, whatever. It's just another tribe to have. And they were really bad. Yeah, and you know the worst part is, like, okay, so Homerid Spawning Bed was the card I'm talking about. Yeah. But the thing is, like, Homerid Spawning Bed doesn't make Homerids. It makes Camerids. They're the baby Homerids. What the fuck is that? What the fuck? I don't understand the etymology of this race, of this species. What the shit, man? Like, I don't know. Horses make little baby horses. Like, they make holes. That, yes, but that's not like you don't get yeah, to do you can that. Make a full token. You don't like, get to do that with your fantasy creature names. You don't get to do that. I mean, they do. I don't. It, no. I call foul. So you need to reprint all the cards. Do so you call foul? Adam, I almost stopped the call. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, like I was hovering. <laughs> I just. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Uh, why, did, why did you read Homerid's Spawning Bed? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Homerid's Spawning Bed is a uh, two blue enchantment. Um, it is it, Its ability is to pay one Karos and two blue to sacrifice a blue creature to create X11 one, one blue Camerid creature tokens, where X is the sacrifice creature's converted mana cost. I, I mean, honestly, like, I think this is fine. Like, especially if you're trying to do, like, a big blue yeah. type deck. It's, you know, like, could you imagine sacrificing Chasm Skull? <laughs> yeah. Counters on it. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, I thought it was so amazing because, you know, I would sacrifice, like, a Kraken or something. Right. You know? And, like, I still do occasionally, like, in a dumb, in my dumb Kraken deck, you know? Like, you throw out one of those redonkulous Krakens that's, like, I don't know, a 12, like, um, Joko Motor or something. You know, right. and then sacrifice him and then get like a million little camera tokens. So. Or just one of the ones that like bounces all the stuff. What is, what is the oh. scourge of the something? Oh, yeah. Karavik. Karavik something cracking. Oh, Keterek. Yeah. Keterek Leviathan yeah. would also do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, bounce everything and then make dudes out of it. You're, I mean, you already bounced everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You might as well, right? Like deep right. spawn or goofy ass shit. Like, yeah, I love exactly. this card. It's stupid. Yeah. It's really dumb. So. I like that. There's, there's lobster silhouettes in the background. <laughs> I, was, I was literally about to call attention to lobster silhouettes. <laughs> it's so <Fantastic>. fucking stupid. <laughs> oh god! Right. Oh, what's your second one? My next one uh, is is fairly cool. I, I think this is a nice little budget card to have in here. Uh, Soul Exchange. Uh, it's black black for a sorcery that says as an additional cast cost to cast it. You have to exile a creature you control. Uh, and then you get to return target creature card from graveyard to the from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, put a plus two plus two counter on it if the <laughs> if the creature you exiled was a thrall. Okay, yeah. Let's get rid of that entire last sentence. Hey, um, no, I, you know I can't say don't get rid of that last sentence because it actually plays into my card. So I mean, thralls were a thing yeah, in Fallen enough, Empire. Yeah, they, they were a thing, um, and and there are a few like Endrixar is not unplayable and stuff like that, but. It's dumb. Um, it's fucking stupid. Yeah. Yeah, but but Soul Exchange, I mean, it's kind of like a reanimate. I mean, like, you know, for for two mana, you're reanimating, you know, some big creature. You could do this super early game, mm -hmm. you know. Uh I I think this card is fine. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's amazing cuz yeah, you have to exile a creature, but yeah, I, I mean, it's at sorcery speed and all that kind of whatever, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, I mean, Soul Exchange is totally playable. Like, right. I own a copy of this card. I've actually never played it, only because I put it in decks and it just never came out, you know? But it is exactly right. what you say. Like, it's a great budget option, because if you don't want to pay, what, $20, $30 for a reanimate or whatever right. that card is up there. I mean, I, I kitchen tabled this card back in the day, you know, and it was fine. Yeah. It, you know, you should say it actually does have a, um, it actually does have a one thing up on reanimate is that you don't lose life. Yeah, so, exactly. You know, you pay one extra black, and I think reanimate's actually a sorcery anyway, right? It is, yeah. yeah. So, you know, you pay one black, you, you exile a derpy little token, and then whatever. So. Right. If you, don't, if you don't have money for that, this is a good, good fill-in. I think that this is a fine reprint at common in this set, since, again, they're looking for cards from every set. Fallen Empires is pretty weak. Like, this is a decent card to put in there. Yeah, sadly. I mean, back in the day, you know, I would use it with my card, um, to actually put the two yeah, plus two plus two counter but, on man, it. Man, this, this card has not aged well. <laughs> really? I, I like this card. This is the Mario Brothers 2 of Magic. I like Mario Brothers 2. Stop it. I see, it's, it's good, man. I would rather play Mario Brothers 2 than the original Mario Brothers at this point. Damn, you're wrong. I just, I, excuse Fight. me? You are crazy. 
<laughs> we are finding out way too much about ourselves right now. I mean, that said, uh, like when I say fight, no, I'm not actually going to fight a marine. That's a really bad idea. <laughs> not, but, I don't think. What are we going to do? Like, I'm going to get on a plane to Florida right now over breeding. Do pit. it. Fuck it. What are we doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, breeding pit three colorless and a black enchantment uh, at the beginning of your upkeep. Sacrifice breeding pit unless you pay black black. Um, yeah. And at the beginning of your end step, create a zero one black throw creature token. Yep. Yeah. This was the fuel for for so many like sacrifice decks for so many years. Yeah, and, like you know this plus fallen angel and your Lord of the Pit and things like that. Like this mm-hmm. was just what was used. Absolutely, yeah. So because you didn't have awakening zone or anything like that. Yeah, because then you would put it. You would put it in a deck just like everyone else did. Like you would put it in a deck with Lord of the Pit, and you would get, you'd be like, oh man, this is amazing because I'm only paying half of the upkeep cost of a force yeah, of nature. I mean, I mean. <laughs> You know, it's a, a it's like a it's like a two card combo man yeah <laughs> you know, yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> um yeah i don't know i still i actually do still play this uh in a couple decks like it's not good it's it, like there are better options if you're making tokens i nowadays. think at this point there are uh i mean there's a Way level better. of nostalgia that like every time i'm looking for a token generator i'm like mm, maybe <laughs> no it's and it's just it shouldn't yeah, probably. I mean, there are because Endrixar is a thing. Like, it's just way easier to make any kind of token, as a matter yeah. of fact, than this guy. I mean, one of my favorite derpy ways is your next card out of Homelands. Uh, but uh, yeah, so let's let's transition from pretty hot garbage to maybe hotter garbage. It's really hard to say. Hey, you know what? This was a secret tech segment back in the day because uh, I actually forgot this card existed. I never played with it back in the day, but um, Andy actually was the one who clued me into it. And excuse me, it was just recently reprinted in Eternal Masters. No, this card is fine. The set is garbage. Oh, yes, the set is hot garbage. So anyway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Homelands is not very good, but it has a few playables in it like most of these do. Um, so my, my first biggest singer autocrat, which I have always loved this card. Uh, it's three and a black for a two, two. And when he enters the battlefield, he comes with, uh, what three, yeah. Yep. Three Oh ones. Um, what kind of O ones? Oh, uh, surf. Yes. Surf. Surf Come on. This is important. And when he leaves the battlefield, you have to exile all the surf tokens. But if you're yeah. doing something where you need a whole bunch of sacrifices, uh, this guy brings it real quick. Oh yeah, this guy gives Fallen Angel plus eight plus four. <laughs> That's all on his own. Yeah, that that is yeah, that was the thing that happened back in the day. So yeah, yeah man, um, man, it's just great to just like pop out three tokens at once like that too. Yep. And like there's still plenty of times today when you would want that, and especially like easy sacrifice fodder. So you need some- right, and it never like looks like a particularly oppressive board state either, because people are like, "Oh, okay, you got a two two and three oh ones." Like, I don't really care, but you can generate some serious value off of that. Yeah, if you bait someone into using removal on your Singer Autocrat, you won that exchange. Yeah, absolutely. So that's I, I could not agree more. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's a hundred percent. Um, yeah, put it put it some decks. You'll you'll like it. So, so what, what do you got for Homelands? Oh, I fucking love this card. I know I'm never going to convince anyone. This does off the top of my head. I'm never going to convince anyone to play this card, and I've talked about it on way... I've talked about this card more on the internet than anyone else. This is like my giant shark. Um, giant Oyster. Oh, is, that. Oh, I thought you were talking about your other one. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm going to go for Giant no, Oyster No, you're first. wrong about Giant Oyster. <laughs> I, I already know what that card does. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, can you not? How have you been on a cast with me and not no, know? No, no, no. I know what Giant Oyster <laughs> yeah. does. So, uh, two Carlos and two Blue. It's an O3. Just slow your roll, people. This is pretty powerful. Um, <laughs> giant Oyster. You may choose not to untap Giant Oyster during your untap step. Uh, Adam, how would you like to slowly strangle your opponent's creatures? As long as you don't untap it. it, which is better. Yeah, whatever. It's a giant oyster. Uh, so you tap giant oyster, and then for as long as giant oyster remains tapped, target tapped creature doesn't untap during its controller's untap step, and at the beginning of each of your draw steps, put a minus one, minus one counter on that creature. When giant oyster leaves the battlefield or becomes untapped, remove all minus one, minus one counters <laughs> from that creature. <laughs> that makes it super good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you when know, it becomes untapped. Yeah, it did nothing for the last three turns. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I swear, I have to stop myself from putting this in decks. 
This is so fucking. This so is a sickness. Bad. It's, it's a sickness. So I'm not saying that you should play this card, but I'm kind of secretly saying you should definitely play this card. Look, the art is literally like uh, I went to an aquarium, and this is the coloring book they gave me. <laughs> yeah, it's real bad. <laughs> it, it's somewhere between there and somebody should do like the uh, most adult rated alter of this card. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we really need to go there for giant oyster. <laughs> But, uh, to make the card good. Uh, come on, man. I I will argue that this is still playable. Um, this is not good. Like, don't play it probably if you want to win. But definitely yeah. play it if you want to just, you know, do some lulls. It got yeah. time shifted. Someone else likes this card. So, it's bad. Someone? Yeah, it's probably bad. Uh, what's your second card, Adam? My second card is actually played. Yes. Your second card is actually good. Yeah. So. Uh, Merchant Scroll. So it is one in a blue for a sorcery, which is the only bad part about this card, uh, that says, search your library for a blue instant card, reveal that card, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. This is actually so good, it's restricted in vintage. Really? I did not know that part. Huh. Uh, yeah, this card's amazing. Well, yeah. yeah, no, really good. I was about to qualify amazing, but I don't have to. No, it's just really good. No, I think it's, I think it's absolutely fine. I mean, like, this definitely sees play in Spellslinger decks. End of story. Yeah, no, it's really good. Like, I actually just I bought one over the summer to put it in a Spellslinger deck. Yeah. It's, yeah, uh, I have to good. go with the original Homelands art on that one too. Ooh, um, actually, I go with you on that. Yeah, yeah. I I like that. Just like I would go with the original Singir Autocrat art. So yes, um, yeah. I, I would as well. Um, he looks yeah, much more skeevy in the original art. Yeah, the eighth edition isn't bad. There's nothing wrong with it, you know. But yeah, no, the, no. Original Homelands is definitely the way you want to go for that. So yeah. Uh, so my next card is again. I think Adam, you probably don't like these effects, but I really like direct damage effects in green because I think they kind of come <laughs> out of nowhere, and I don't know why I really like that. It's not like the way I win in green, but Primal Order is a two colorless and two green enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, Primal Order deals damage to that player equal to the number of non-basic lands he or she controls. I could totally see this being played in green. Like, yeah. I, I, like I would green. love to see this alongside Hall of Gemstones. Yes. So, like, you're just keeping them off of the colored mana yes. that, they're on, that their non-basics are, and you're just hitting them for it. Like <laughs> Adam, yeah. you described like every mono green deck I own. So, right. I yeah. mean, that's, that sounds fine. Yeah. You know? Again, not amazing, but it'll, it, you'd be surprised. Like, I have snuck out wins because of this card. Oh, dude, so. you, you run into somebody with a four or five color deck. Like, every oh, yeah. turn they're taking seven, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. <laughs> I may or may not have intentionally put this in a monocolor deck when the four color commanders came out. Right. So, um, and it's just good. So No, no, it's good, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's move on to uh, the, the sets that you just slagged off, Adam. You weren't even going to talk about these I sets. I know, because I was doing them in a different order. So what is the matter with you, man? Come on. Ice Age forever. That's, the, that's what right, the tattoo Age, on my butt is. Right, first of all, there's too many cards to talk about in Ice Age. And I wanted to say Lurgoyf, but I didn't say Lurgoyf. I like Lurgoyf quite a bit. So instead, I went with an EDH staple, in my opinion, that is two dollars, and it's a common now, and it can be a common later, like or, or even shifted to uncommon if they wanted to, which is Mystic Remora. Yeah, for one blue mana, you have an enchantment that has cumulative upkeep of one generic. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card unless the player pays three. Okay, this doesn't last as long as Ristic Study usually does, uh, but you always draw cards off of it because nobody ever pays for. It's also true. I think you know as long as you as long as you play it knowing like having in the back of your mind they're like yeah if I get like two or three cards off of this I'll be fine because it, it does yeah. get expensive to do the upkeep after a while um, right you know if you just say like hey this is if you think of it like a slow brainstorm or not even a slow brainstorm like a slow concentrate you know yeah um it, I, that's awesome. yeah yeah because you're not gonna you, you're right it's not like rustic study you're not gonna continually get this at some point you're not gonna pay that cumulative upkeep um but it still works like i play yeah. mystic remora it, yeah definitely works um i don't think it's as good as my card though well so. yeah i mean it depends on which pick you're going with but yeah yeah so um orcish lumberjack is is still 17 cents for some unknown reason um Orcus yeah. Lumberjack is a one mana, one one. It's an orc shocker. Um, and it has one of my favorite abilities. Sacrifice a forest, add three mana in any combination of red or green to your mana pool. 
Yeah, this card is way better than I usually give it credit for. Like, I I have run into decks before where I'm like, oh, okay, Orcish Lumberjack. And then they're like, oh, I'm on turn seven. Are you still on turn two? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm like, what, <laughs> what just happened? Yeah. Why are all the big things happening? I don't understand. I mean, in, in any gruel colored deck, like, or any any deck that runs red and green, like, you don't even really, you don't even do anything else. Like, you'll have extra forests because yeah, you, have you have enough forests. Yeah. But, like, you're going to have them. Like, it's not like you're running... It's not you know, like you're doing a little simulation of the Lorax right there on... You know, like, you're going to have extra forest. You're playing green, for Christ's sakes. Um, yeah, it's real good, man. You should yep, you should definitely do it. Like, they probably don't do it every turn. But, man, you can accelerate yourself to crazy amounts of power with this card. So, definitely yeah. do some Orcish Lumberjacking. Um, next one, again, I think you cheated. But I'll allow it, because I love these cards. So. Look. I, all right, so here here's my rationale for it. Yeah. In every set, even the master sets, they print basic lands. That is true. Okay. I want them to just replace those with snow basic lands. That's it. Yeah. Um, they not, should have done this. Additional ones, just all of them will be snow lands. Because then yeah. it allows you to do a few things. Like, first of all, they need reprints. Desperately. Second of all, they'll get foils. People will be able to pimp out their decks. It allows you to print like the snow, snow matter stuff from a cold snap and things like that. I just, I, I think it's a, it's an easy way to get more of those out into the world and everyone would be perfectly happy with it because it doesn't impact the game in most situations. Yeah. Um, just the fact that snow covered mountains are 250 a piece. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, like fuck, man, it's a little ridiculous, you know, so. Just put them out there, snow covered islands, get cheaper, snow, you know, like there's, there's no reason not to do it, is my point. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think realistically, probably the only ones you need are islands and mountains because there are better ways to ramp with, with forests. I have a set. My mono white has snow covereds. Yeah. Yeah. Mono white works. You know what? I, I have a set of uh, snow covered swamps that I play in Gisa, Ghoul Caller Gisa. Um, yeah, which works too. So, and like those are actually still relatively cheap. You can find those for under a buck. Snow covered planes are pretty pretty cheap too, like seventy five yeah. cents a piece. Um, I actually prefer the cold snap art in almost all cases. Um, yeah, I mean that's fine. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean the art's a little bit better in in most of those. You know, the snow covered but... island art in the original Ice Age kind of creeps me out because the fucking faces on there. It's like Easter Island, but like if Easter um, Island yeah, yeah, yeah. had a sudden <laughs> snow, like it, it it's a little weird. But yeah, you know, um, yeah, really good. Like we need some, we need some snow covered lions. So, uh, next one, I would be remiss. I almost didn't put this on the list. And then I figured that listener Phil would probably stab me in real life. I mean, this is a really good card. That's yeah. Yeah. I mean, and and this is like, this is one of the iconic cards that actually made it into iconic masters. So, and it's it's been reprinted many times, and it should be I think reprinted that's what again. What held me back was it, it's been reprinted a bunch, so I was like, "Meh." It's so good, though. Like, how it can needs you the original art, though. See, this is the other thing that Iconic Masters screwed up on. Like, they really needed to do something at least evocative of the original art. Yeah, like, I mean, maybe it, have somebody like maybe even have Mark Tedden revisit it and just like render it a little bit better, spend some like real time on it, making it look the same but just better. Yeah, I know. I mean, they went with the from the vault art, which is bad. So, like, don't ever go with the from the vault art. You could almost say that like universally. Um, but anyway, Necropotence um, is one of the best draw cards ever. Necropotence? Uh, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> no, just no. <laughs> um, uh, three black enchantment. Uh, skip your draw step. Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. Pay one life, exile the top card of your library face down. Put that card into your hand at the beginning of your next end step. Yeah. Adam, the only question you have to ask with uh, Necropotence is how much of your life do you pay at once? Yeah. I mean, conservatively, like, I probably draw three or four cards a turn with this. That's if I'm being conservative. Yeah, I would say I would say three or four cards is usually where I'm at. Um you know, I usually don't like to get my hand far above seven, depending on the deck that I'm in. Yeah, and, and I mean, if it, I'm playing some kind of recursion deck, then I don't care. And it, it is worth saying that, like, you do exile that card from your graveyard, 
So like it, yeah. it, at the end, if you do go over the seven in your hand, like you're just literally throwing those cards out forever. Oh, that's right. You exile everything. Yes. Even when you discard. So it's just bad in graveyard centric too. I forgot about that. It is. Yeah. Very no, bad I usually I usually decks. just keep my my hand at seven, uh, unless I have rel- a reliquary tower, and then it's possible that I draw like thirty five. Yes. Um, I have in particularly in maybe a Loro drawn twenty cards at yeah. once. Yeah. yeah. A turn it sounds. Real good. Yeah, it's real, real and good. And the correct choice. Yes. Um, so definitely play Necropotence if you're not. If for some reason you're playing Commander and you don't own a copy of this card, stop what you're doing and buy a copy of this card. Yeah. There's really... I think that we could say the same for my next pick, too. <laughs> yeah, actually, it that's hard That's hard to argue against your next pick. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, what is your next one, Adam? So we're moving into Alliances, one of the best sets in Magic. I can't say no to that. Like, I want to. I know. And <laughs> but, then you look through it, and you're like, it really was pretty good. Like, every time I look through it, I forget. Like, I forget that Arcane Denial, which is the card we're going to talk about, um, yeah. was the, was in the set. Like, I forget yeah. that there's so much good stuff in this set. There's I literally so had a hard good. time pairing this down. So I mean, there are cards like Swamp Mosquito that just don't matter. But um, So, yeah, Arcane Denial. One in a blue for an instant that says counter target spell its controller may draw up to two cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep you draw a card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep let me tell you what arcane denial is the combo savior yeah it's cheap it's splashable it counters everything yeah they draw some cards who cares yeah like th- this is i i have started to run this almost in more decks than counter spell I agree because of the splash ability. Yeah, it's so easy to cast this in every deck. You put it, this slots into three color decks, no problem. It's basically like this and disdainful stroke. I also, can I just throw out a quick, um, a quick thing? If you, if you play this in even a monocolored deck with any of the cost reducers, like, yeah, that, then it becomes a one mana counter spell. A hard right. counter, too. Like a yeah. one mana hard counter instant. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. The only question, Adam, is which Richard Kane Ferguson art do you prefer? Uh, I'm going to go with number 32. Yes, 32 is the correct answer. Yeah. Um, so good job. You can continue to be on the cast. <laughs> um, also, and th- this is because alliances, like, l- we're not the only one people that forget that alliances was a set. The alliances version of these cards, 65 cents. The yeah. next, The next cheapest is $2. And yeah. t- actually, almost three dollars, as a matter of fact, because the Commander Anthology one is two thirteen, and Commander twenty thirteen and sixteen are both three dollars. So, like, just just buy the Richard Kane Ferguson number thirty two. Yeah. yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's amazing. You can literally buy like five copies of that card for what it'll cost you for another another set. Yeah. So now this card, your next card, has never been reprinted. Never been reprinted. I don't I don't believe so because I keep having to buy it. Um it yeah. was reprinted in online, which actually online, but it's never been reprinted in paper. Has not. It that is because it is on the reserve list. So that oh, is Jesus, why that is, that is probably You're why killing me with this. <laughs> like, hey guys, what? this won't be a Masters twenty five. <laughs> Hey, the door, but like I did that that time when we were talking about Feldegriff, and a listener called me out. Listen, I'm I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but there's a listener in the oh, comments yeah, actually called me that. out that on that funny. one. I'm like, that's because I'm stupid, so don't worry about it. That's not Adam is just because there's like thousands of cards here, and who cares because it's Keljorn Outpost, and it's a dumb piece of shit card that I like. It's not that's a piece so of shit. Good. I like I, the, this, I like this card. card. Um, I actually I play this card in any white token deck, or actually any like I play it in soldiers, like. It is really good. We're ne- it's so sad that we're never going to get uh, a reprint of this because it's yeah. $5, and it's really, really good. Yeah, we so. get that weird flip one that's almost Kil'jorn Outpost, but... Yeah, yeah, but it's not as good. So, anyway, yeah. uh, if Kil'jorn Outpost... This one has another brick of text on it. Um, if Kil'jorn Outpost would enter the battlefield, sacrifice a planes instead. And if you do, put Kil'jorn Outpost onto the battlefield. If you don't, put it into its owner's graveyard. In, uh, good thing to know, this does not come in tapped. So yeah, I was just thinking that. I thought that it did. I, I haven't played it in a while. Yeah, I mean, and you would be forgiven to think so, but in alliances, like th- that meant nothing. So um, you can also tap it to add just a regular white to your mana pool. But what you do is you pay one and a white to tap it to put a soldier token onto your battlefield. 
a uh, one one white soldier token. Sorry, I almost read the original. So treat this token as a one one white creature. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, this card's great. I used to play this in control decks like mad because it's just like okay, I'll make a dude and block your guy. Moving on. Yeah, it's it's I don't know. It's really really good. So kill Jordan Alpha and still five bucks. So yeah, yeah, that's another one. Like you should yeah, worth picking up if you don't have it. Yeah, I mean, along with everything else, like I don't think. The world has figured out that alliances is a set, apparently. So when they do, um, you know, it, it's funny because everyone knows about the next card. It, uh, not the next card here, but like Lake of the Dead is the next card in the the yeah, block for yeah. alliances, and like that card is ridiculously expensive. Well, Everybody and knows Force about of Will. That. I mean, I just I stop talking about Force of Will that I just forget is a card. So yeah, I just <laughs> like, you like you never remember. I that's never rem- even I do it. I swear to God, like there's is there like a superpower that like removes. <laughs> Something like from your memory, it removes that card from my brain. I literally don't ever think about that ever, ever. Uh, which anyway. Force of Will might get reprinted? I'm not sure because it's back up to eighty dollars. But anyway, That's my next right. pick is not that. It is it's it's a cute little fairy. That's not a fairy, oddly. Sure. Yeah. I didn't, did they uh, have fairies at the time? I don't think so. Yeah, they did. Oh well, fuck me. Scripps rights were fairies. And then there was like Fairy King or something like that, too. That's stupid. Um, so Elvish Spirit Guide is a 2-2 two, two for two and a green. And it is an elf spirit. Uh, don't pay attention to any of those things I said because it'll never get used like that. <laughs> you can eg- exile Elvish Spirit Guide from your hand and it makes a green. Yep. I mean, that's it. The that's funny, what it's used for. Yeah, the funny part is everyone knows Simeon Spirit Guide, which is like the plain, plainer chaos version of this yeah. in red, but no one remember. I don't remember that Elvish Spirit Guide was a thing. No, and, no, this is played in in the same formats. I mean, I didn't say that good players didn't remember. I said I oh, don't. Okay, yeah. I don't remember that this is a thing. I, I remember this, and I remember never playing it back in the day. Uh, I think I played yeah. against one or two people who who used it, and I was like, "Meh," you know, because still your payoff was always like, you know, some green creature. And you're like, okay, so terror, yeah, like you know. Um, <laughs> but yes, for for storm type things and shenanigans, card's great. Yes, and, and it needs a reprint, and it can be reprinted. So reprint it. It's also true. It isn't uncommon. So I yeah. actually I even like the artwork. So. Now, your next one has been reprinted before, but I could use more of these in the world. Yeah, I could. The only problem with this is the same thing with everything that says Limb Duels. That fucking yeah, carrot. It's impossible to look up. Yeah, yeah it's, it's so fucking annoying. Anyway, uh, Limb Duels Vault is uh, it's a phenomenal card. It got reprinted in Commander 2013. Um, it, the original is, is still my favorite because the artwork's incomprehensible. It's not a fucking vault. I don't care what you say. Um, yeah, it, I, I mean, look, I'm not. I, I it's the know. root system of a tree that like went through a library. That's not a vault, but anyway, it's a, a blue and a black instant. Look at the top five cards of your library. As many times as you choose, you may pay one life. Put those cards on the bottom of your library in any order. Then look at the top five cards of your library. Then shuffle your library. Put the last card you looked at this way on top of your library in any order. Man, if you have yeah. to do some serious digging through your library, Lim Duel's Vault is your friend. So, right. Yeah. It's amazing. So, I don't know. Yeah, no, this, this card is just straight out good. Like, you got a Demir deck or anything that's playing those two colors. Uh, there's no reason not to play that card. Yep. Um, and with that, I believe we are calling this one a wrap for this. Yes. We have to end it somewhere, folks. We can't go through all of 25 Years of Magic in one show. So, we're going to end it Alliances, and we'll pick up again in the technology segment of the next uh, show so with please with Mirage Ooh. Yeah. again like hey Mirage reserve list cards I don't know pick them up pick them up while they're hot people so. yeah sad uh, but please stick with us and we're gonna go right into the outro Yay, outro. Well, Adam, it's uh, it's come to a close. It has. Um, it's another day when I feel like I should be putting on a sweater and sitting down and talking about, you know, how we will see each other again soon. That's true. Maybe a nice car. I'm not going to put it on a sweater because it's like 80 degrees here. What the hell? It's just goddamn Florida. So... <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> anyway, folks, Adam, if people want to reach out and talk to you about how amazing, maybe not currently, but in the past, The Simpsons were, um, where can they do that? No. No. Uh, you can definitely hit me up on Twitter at Squire9999 or at The Trinosphere. Sweet. And, folks, if you just want to blast out to all of us all at once uh, and talk to us about your your favorites of Commander's 25 years past, we're going to do a couple shows in a row like this because it'll take us a little while to get through. It will. <laughs> um, <laughs> shocker. Uh, hit us up at CommanderCast at gmail.com and at Twitter uh, at CommanderCast. So. Now, uh, be sure to check out our CommanderCast Facebook page, and we may, although we're not going to announce it now, but we may have some other places you can find CommanderCast in the near yeah. future. Who knows? You may possibly be looking at that now. Um, the first one I can definitely talk about is we're, we're up on YouTube now. So, yeah. um, And that will be just on our YouTube page. Um, Adam, you know my favorite part of putting this podcast up on YouTube was? <laughs> so the so we never had that many subscribers anyway, but when I put it up, I put the last 10 episodes up on YouTube, and uh, the day after I put all the 10 episodes up, and it took a while to put all of it up, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh man, this is going to be great. More people are going to see us. Um, our subscriber count actually dropped by one. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so good. I want to. I, I, I don't know who that person is. Dude. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, that was really good. I like that. Um, so anyway, uh, big thanks to everyone here at the Commander Cast Network. We will see you guys next week with more community, strategy, and technology. So until then, let's get it! Yeah.